What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? Marcos, Red Moon, what's up? How y'all doing today? We are uh, loading screen extraordinaire here. I need to kick it in gear here today. Um, oh, yeah, at work. Oh, well, hopefully the day goes by quick. I'm doing good. Just getting uh, getting my day started. I need to kick it in gear here today because I slacked. I've only got five hours and 20 minutes to complete this, and I want to make sure I get it done. So, I mean, that's more than enough time just to do 17 more Onslaught floors, but what's going on there, Farmer? How you doing? Uh, doing good man doing good just getting uh getting the caffeine flowing here kind of getting to it today i've had some connection issues the last couple of days but uh they did some upgrades on my road so i actually got a little bit better um better upload speed now my download speed's the same what up sacred digital brother how you doing uh, I'm working through an alt AP reset and at the same time getting my weekly done. I got the onslaught weekly, so it kind of works out perfect with the whole uh, alt AP resetting. Having to do, uh, you know, the 20 onslaught maps. And I only got about five hours to get it done, so I need to quit messing around. <laughs> I went way too slow with everything uh, last stream. <laughs> Let's see. We got a ton of DU on this one, huh? And we're getting all the way to the spawn. We might as well just do it. What do we have? We got, uh, what? 1160 left. I think we can go go big here. Oh, what is my... That's right, my boosts are on my reflect beam now. I keep forgetting about that. What up, G-Zero? How's it going? Let's see, so that leaves me almost a thousand left. Not quite. Is that gonna be, am I gonna have enough to do all the things? I'm not sure. put a big reflect here I'm not sure if we got to worry about hex throwers here or not probably way way over killing it I had to start off with the spam your inventory map too that's a bit of a bummer I think that's good enough uh, people were using Nimbuses the whole time. Nimbuses are super strong. I'm using a Nimbus today to mix it up. Um, my next stream, I think I'm going to use the Mercenary. Nimbuses, the Nimbus is, in a very small way, slightly better than the Dragons in most cases. I uh, better get geared up first then. Huh? Just it's all about the gear, you know. As long as you uh, grind out the gear, you'll be able to do all the things. But yeah, the deal with the Nimbus is it does have a real small um, AOE. I 
but it's mainly a single target defense and it hits like a truck. So you get the uh, the benefit of the truck hitting. Crit chance is mathematically better than crit damage in every situation, unless you are already at 100% crit chance. Crit damage doesn't matter if you don't crit. So if you do the math, uh, crit chance is always going to win that battle. On a damaging defense, of course. Or hero. Hope you get some ingots. I mean, just got to play the right map. And then no, no mystery on how to get ingots. There are easier maps and harder maps. Uh, there's no, is it good enough? You'll end up just doing everything just because uh, you'll end up having tons of godly orbs. So there is no, is it good enough? Is it your main setup? Is that what you're using? Then yeah, you should godly it. Whether or not it's good enough has no factor on literally anything. Yeah, C10 still the highest. They got the systems in place now where they could put more um, chaos levels, but they've already publicly said they're not going to. I mean, the easiest answer is more chaos levels, to be honest, as far as development, but, but that's not the route they want to take. I mean, now that the stat squish has happened, I mean, shit, sky's the limit. Chaos it up. But what they don't want to do is there's still caps in the game and people are still hitting them. So they don't want to add more power creep, you know? Well, I mean, that's what they said they want to do is do more modes. So I'm sure that will be the thing, which, you know, is a welcome addition, really. The more, uh, the more ways to play the game, the better. I'm curious when we're going to get any DDA news. They dropped that tease, what feels like so long ago, and they haven't followed up on it at all. Very curious with what's going on behind the scenes there. Around when do I think the new hero is going to be released? Um, well, I mean, they said that they want to try to get it out by the end of the month. I think, personally, I hope that they wait until April or May or whatever and put the amount of time that they need into it to get it in. But that's not always the case with a free-to-play game. They're going to want to rush the content out to make the dollars, which, you know, I mean, it's... The way it goes, it is a business, you know. But yeah, they've said they want to get it out by the end of March, so hopefully, um, hopefully they're able to get it out by the end of March. Got a bunch of stuff coming this month too. Like that Sturdy Valley update on the nineteenth is kind of big, so I'm hoping they don't coincide it with that too closely. And then what, the 29th, there's a Path of Exile League starting. That would be cool. It's a fun map. I mean, that would be super cool to see Wyverns that went no boss for expeditions. Well, it's just, it's the same issue as all games. You know, it's not a like something specific to Dungeon Defenders 2. In every video game, the person who's actually designing and like creating the game from an engineering perspective is never the person that decides when launches happen. 
and that's why every game out there I can't think of a game that launched polished I'm sure there's something right is there any games that launched or major updates that launched in a polished state in the last 10 years well I guess I can't say that I just brought up Stardew the Ginger Island update was very very uh, polished when it hit Baldur's Gate was Baldur's Gate good and polished it's just it's a real rarity you know and it becomes it's because of that I mean like I said the people doing the design work and the people doing the engineering are not the same people that pick uh, launch dates going on shadow shot how you doing But yeah, I just want, you know, I want to have a good experience when it launches. Oh no. I'm not sure what happened there. Baldur's Gate was super buggy. Well, there you go. Your uh your Baldur's Gate has been disputed there, Red Moon. <laughs> YouTube chat says it was super buggy. Yeah, it's the funny thing. They I don't know exactly what it's not real fiber that we have here well a bug is not pc associated so you can't pull master race uh wrapping that one there red moon a bug is a bug but yeah anyway it's not true fiber it's the fake fiber where they give you the one gig download speed but your up upload speed is terrible and my upload speed was decent before it was like a I, I had like a hundred uh meg upload i mean for fake fiber that's really pretty good um and then my download speed was one gig but they said that this was going to take my upload speed up to about uh 300 megs and my download speed would remain the same at a gig, which is more than enough, you know, for me. I mean, all we do is, as far as downloads go, you know, we watch Netflix and, you know, I mean, we don't even need a gig, to be honest. But, but yeah, anyway, the my upload speed actually went down after their, um, after their, uh, their system upgrade so I mean it didn't go down enough where it's like detrimental to anything but yeah it went down I didn't test it this morning I know they were still working on it last night but it's funny how that works supposedly replacing I don't even know what they were doing they were doing something sorry y'all cleaning out the old inventory real quick since this uh, map spams it at you um, I'm not sure exactly what it is that they did. They were up on the poles working. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, happened there. I'm assuming uh, Hex Thrower may have made a turn somewhere. I'll keep an eye out here this time. here in the UK it's you know if it's real fiber or not if your upload speed and your download speed match or are similar you know what happens is they bond these networks and they've got a choice they can offer people more download speed or more upload speed and so few people really care at all about upload speed so it allows them to advertise one gig downloads you know when it's not it's not true fiber which i mean like i said 100 megs is more than sufficient what it takes like 10 to play a game and uh live stream at uh, 60 frames per second at the same time it takes about 10 to do that smoothly
in South Africa, they've got the good internet, but not a stable power grid. Yeah. What's up, Cake? Cake's got all the good internet out there, out there in Europe. Good morning from Guam. Wow. Well, welcome there, Chetty. Welcome. New season pass thoughts? I mean, I think it's a good thing. Um, I think they'll do it similar to the last one. I don't think it'll be anything new and different to what we're already used to now. I think it'll be very similar to the last one. But I think that that was, I think the last one was a good thing. I think it was probably a huge revenue generator for them. Plus, it gave a lot of people a reason to log in and play. Where, you know, anything, you're in, you're, you got a free-to-play game. What's the best thing can happen in a free-to-play game? Give people a reason to play the game, right? To keep people logging in. And the, the season pass definitely did that. So, I mean, I think it was a good thing. I know a lot of people have mixed emotions on it, but um, I think the way they handled it is fair too with the getting the, shoot man, I'm gonna have to sell some, sell pet food on my, <laughs> on my alt, I'm running out of inventory space. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I welcome new one for sure. Alright, we got hex throwers. We got more hex throwers. Yeah, when the new update hits. So we're all hoping that the new update comes by the end of March. Which would mean you would theoretically it would uh arrive when the new update gets here in March. do this one just like we do the dragons yep. like we'll go three though I think that's more than sufficient Actually, three is what I normally do on the dragons, too. Well, thanks there, Jugger. Welcome, welcome. Not no throwers to really worry too much about here. I'm not sure how much DU is we're going to have here. Let's see how it all works out. We got a little Curse of Kazi action here. Let's put them up here since we got the Curse of Kazi. Let's see. That leaves me not quite enough to do the full buff, but I think I might have to drop a couple off the, do I need three here on each side? Not so sure I do. I guess we'll have to skip the buff beam on this side or we could drop well we just drop one since they are going to share quite a bit and then that gives me 40 let's see how it works out So anyway, y'all, I got, um, let me see, what do I have? I think I got two, two cat ears and one theater mask to give away today. Let's see. Oops, sorry. I done black screened, y'all. Give me one moment here. There 
There we go. Yeah, I got two cat ears and one theater mask to give away today. So we'll do uh, cat ears on each, one on each platform, one on Twitch and one on YouTube. And then the theater mask will uh, give away which, whatever platform has the most viewers uh, towards the end of the stream here. Hmm, looks like I might need a reflect beam here. Oh man. Definitely gonna need a reflect beam here. Okay, let's put it down here. I think that's probably good. Will you win the headset today? I don't know, maybe. Do I think they're going to nerf the hunter? I don't think they're going to nerf the hunter. Uh, there's no reason to think the hunter would get nerfed. It's not the top of the food chain right now. So, I mean, there's literally no reason to think it would get nerfed. If anything, the hunter should get buffed. Put some ranged hero on par with the melee heroes, you know? Give us somebody. Can't make it all, all mercenary and barbarian. And since they clearly aren't gonna ever do anything about the mercenary or barbarian. And the answer there isn't even nerf them. Like I said, the problem is we don't have enough viable end game options. I mean, we need more viable stuff for super high end game. And then of course the problem there is it becomes a balancing issue earlier in game. So, and that's why we don't have it now. If you made the hunter on par with say the mercenary for, you know, floor or wave 200 survival, then it would make the hunter broken, broken OP early game. So it's a, uh, you know, Anyone who has to handle balance in uh, video games is gotta pull hair out, <laughs> you know, because one thing affects so much. But the answer to fixing metas, uh, not many game developers or not any game developers get it right. Because the answer to fitting, fixing meta issues is you bring underperforming things up to the same quality of what the meta thing was. And then you've got multiple metas and you've got choices. But instead what happens <clears throat> is that whatever the meta thing is, it gets nerfed into the ground and then something else steps up and becomes the new meta you know do they need to be nerfed or do other things need to be buffed what is it about the nimbus that is so crazy powerful where it would need a nerf in your opinion Oh, you don't like them, so they need to be nerfed. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> Stardew forever soon, Uzar, soon. Well, because so many people are doing ancient power resets and it's convenient. Don't confuse convenient with overpowered. You know? 
dragons are convenient too. So like for AP resets, you see most people using either Nimbus or dragons. No, it's nowhere near like reflect beams. Reflect beams were incredibly powerful. When you're doing AP resets, you're doing Chaos 9 content in Chaos 10 gear. So power on whatever you're using is a non-factor. And people are using the Nimbus because it's convenient. Another thing to think about is what would that do for the game? You know, a lot of these things people don't think about. But it's a, you know, look at it, look at this perspective. It's a free to play indie tower defense game in a super small genre that does not have an overwhelming amount of players. So is nerfing anything going to do the company or the game any real benefit long term? Now, granted, nerfs are going to happen. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying you got to look at, you know, is a nerf going to cause more people to come play the game when it needs more people to play the game? Or is a nerf going to cause the game to lose players? Yeah, I mean, that's your option. Obviously, we got our own options. I mean, I do so many crazy different builds on YouTube. That's ridiculous. But right now, I'm doing an AP reset, and I don't want to look at what's going on on the screen. I want to look at chat. So. And I haven't used the Nimbus in fucking three months. For God's sakes. <laughs> Let me use the Nimbus for fuck's sake, Grandmaster. I've been spamming dragons for literally three months. I used the Nimbus one day and you're calling me out? Come on, dude. <laughs> I mean, shit, I just fixed my reflect beam and freed up the deck slot last stream where I could fit in. That's great. I mean, anything is viable. It's Chaos 10 and Chaos 9 content. Use literally anything. I personally see more people spamming trees and buff in boost stars right now than I do Nimbus. But then again, I'm not trying to police anybody and jumping around looking in a bunch of public maps. Just what I run into, I see a whole lot of tree spam. But yeah, archers are great. Like I mentioned earlier in the stream, I, next uh, reset, I'll probably do, um, I'll probably do a mercenary. Uh, I, I've only got a couple giveaways today, so they're not going to be fast and frequent, Jugger. They're going to be for, they won't be for hours. So... Nothing on the alt. Where all the loot at? You got anything on this guy? Well, no 10 on the first map of the day. Cytech with the gift subs. Holy crap, man. Thank you so much. As always. All right. Yeah, saying 95% of the people, you would have no idea what people are using. Is that a stat that developers gave you? I mean, I mean, come on, Grandmaster Vern. Don't hate, man. Don't hate just because you don't like it. Uh, they're both real, real similar there, digital. Let's see, do we want to just do one big spammy area here? I think 
we will. We'll do two big spammy areas. The range on these guys good enough to be doing that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it might take it longer to run, though, is the problem. Hmm, let me get this one, this side built first. And then we'll just see what's left. Haven't seen too many Abyss Lords in play. No doubt there, G0. In fact, you know, I hate to go as far as to say that, but... The people you see playing the, the Abyss Lord are brand new players of the game, and they don't know how bad it is. <laughs> Hate to say it, but... Hmm. Got a boatload of DU. Yeah, I mean... Chaos 10 content? Walls plus anything else. I mean, I think I've used nearly every defense in the game in Chaos 10 now with the little walls plus anything else series. As far as doing AP resets, well, I mean, you're doing... You're doing Chaos 9 content and Chaos 10 gear. So, I mean, literally use whatever you want. Like I said, next reset, I'm or next uh, stream, I'm probably going to use Merc. Probably gonna be murking out. Let's see, let's go Skyguard too, since we got Fitty. Thanks, here, Grandmaster Vern. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Uh the best wall is the wall that you have set up properly, Digital Brother. Some people will tell you trees, some people will tell you werewolves, some people will tell you um training dummies from the squire and it's the real answer is set up the wall that you like the most and that wall will work i personally use the werewolf but i use it because it's the newest thing and it's fun and it's beast so I mean, best is always, um, anytime you throw the word best in there, it's always a matter of opinion. As everyone's goal might be slightly different, you know? Well, I mean, you just have to, you know, situationally for sure they're possibles. But if you're, you know, if your defenses are in a position where the training dummy is going to be a little dicey, then, you know, to either get those upgraded or, you know, just pay attention. But for sure, the training dummy's best form is after some upgrades, no doubt about it. But it's super cheap. It is effective. Uh, especially once you get it upgraded. And uh, tons of people use it. Thanks for following there, Sock. Appreciate it. I got my training dummy set up. I just rarely bust it out, you know? Uh, that giveaway is uh, ended last night at midnight there, Jello. Today's giveaways, um, I don't have a ton of them, so they're not going to be just rolling out on a regular basis. Um, so we'll be doing like one or two giveaways on Twitch and one or two giveaways on YouTube over the course of the entire day. So do apologize, but... I don't have unlimited amounts of that stuff. I've got to wait for them to give them to me or earn them before I can give them away. Oh, 
wonder if his sky guard's even doing anything. Not much. He got a couple shots in. Actually, that Nimbus didn't do anything. Huh. One Nimbus is rolling the roost. Or two, the two closest ones on each side are doing literally all the damage. That's crazy. Well, that one's not the case. That one did pretty good. Weird, these are all even. Hmm. Uh, range actually hurts the Nimbus, doesn't help the Nimbus. In its level of effectiveness. I mean, why is this cloud just chilling here? Oh, you know why? Because I don't have the stupid uh, pylon down. That's why we're having issues here. No, you don't need perfect mods to do C10. C10 is not the most difficult thing in the game. I mean, obviously, perfect mods are certainly going to help. And you can start getting yourself perfect mods in Chaos 8. So there's no reason not to. But mods all max out at Chaos 8, so anything past Chaos 8, there's literally no reason not to have all perfect mods. The only reason is you just don't want to play the game um, a million hours, which is a pretty fair reason. Oh, my Skyguard? My Skyguard should be at max range. Not quite. Huh, I wonder if I don't have a shard on or something. I got everything there. I wonder why it's not at max range. It's normally at max. Well, you don't find 10 out of 10 mods. You reroll 10 out of 10 mods. It's, you gotta remember, it's not DD1. It's not a loot-based game. No, I only put one. I'm pretty sure. I do have range pylon on here, right? Or wait a minute. Yeah, I got range pylon right there. That is so strange. I don't know what the deal is. But, I mean, you know, 12,000 Rage is still pretty damn good. Um, it's easy to do everything in the game. It's do you have time to do it, no digital. The game's not a difficulty-based game. game. It's a very, very casual game. There's no skill level. It's all about did you grind it out or did you not grind it out? I mean, it's a grind game. But there's no skill level, there's no extreme difficulty. It's do you have the gear or do you not have the gear? And it's just, it's all about time spent. You know, or dollar spent for that matter. But, I mean, doing Chaos 9, or doing Chaos 10 and Chaos 9 gear is not super difficult. Doing Chaos 9 and Chaos 8 gear is not super difficult if you have the right setups. Uh, you don't have to know about placements at all. I mean, I am living proof. I know about placements and I spam shit everywhere. I mean, there is a light strategic element.
but it's very, very light. Well, see, that's the thing, Red Moon, is 99.9% .9 of the entirety of the player base, end game to them is Chaos 10. Chaos 10, you, do not, you don't need to know anything. You need to know walls plus anything else, you know? But even, even with that in mind, that still would not make it any sort of skill level. There's no skill level involved. You know, do you want to do 999? You don't need any skill level. You need to figure out where to place shit and get your explosive traps going and get a team and reroll the map for 17 hours and then you win. So even with the placements, you know, placements, no. What to use in what configuration, yes. In very, very end game. But that's a knowledge thing, not a skill thing. At, at heart, it's a strategy game, you know? Who does the best in strategy games? The people that know the much, know the most, you know? I mean, I'm and by no no means saying that in a negative light. I love the game. But I also realize what the game is and what the game isn't. And a lot of people have a tough time grasping that. Speed this thing up a little bit. I love this map, but boy, it is a slow mover if you don't spawn camp it. This is a great survival map too, but in survival you get uh, issues with that far lane over on that far side with it just taking forever because all the mobs getting stuck. All right, SciTech. Well, thanks again. Uh, enjoy your work day. Hopefully it goes by quick. I got to find me a mage build to play in uh, Last Epoch, SciTech. I don't know what... Uh, I looked at all of them, and I, none of them look real, real enticing to me. started a new one I'm gonna do the same thing with a marksman um, but right now I'm still working on my totems you know get my totem guy all fixed it it's good to do that though to come up with your own build because then afterwards you can look back at a build guide and you can see ways that you improved on the build guide and then you can also see anything that you might have missed that might you might be able to incorporate in to help your build out i'm trying to find a a bow a good leveling bow right now as soon as i do i'll probably make a marksman i'm gonna full twink it have them just all de geared out just so I can blast the campaign real fast. I love these people saying that how they complete the campaign in three hours or whatever. I'm not shy of taking skips. I'm just not sure how they're doing it. The dungeon skip route I'm aware of. Yeah, that's what everybody does is the skip dungeon thing. But the problem there is then you got to go back and do all the side quests. So 
so like how much of a time savings is it counting or is it really when you count in having to go get all your idols and your uh, passive points you know high movement speed I mean I think that's a big part of it you do spend a lot of time running you know just running from objective to objective Yeah, what do we got going on here? I thought that was a little latency for a minute. Yeah, kill being able to kill without stopping. That's the one thing that will hold me up on the marksman. Because you know I'm gonna run multi shot. <laughs> In multi shot, of course, you gotta stop the fire. I played way too much Diablo 3 to not run multi-shot. <laughs> I have DH'd for way too long. <laughs> I'm curious when this update's going to hit. I mean, it's possible we might end up getting some info tomorrow. I mean, I think that's reaching. Because they've given us no indicator that there's going to be uh, any info tomorrow. But we could possibly... And they haven't done a Wednesday stream in two weeks now. Uh, so this will be week three if they don't do one uh, tomorrow. But I just want to know how it's going to work out with PoE and Stardew. PoE's next league actually might even end up being a skip league if it's not... Uh, it's going to be hard for them to top the last league. It might be play other stuff and wait for PoE too. PoE 2, no doubt, is going to be uh, the game of the summer for a lot of people, I think. Didn't play Magic Find? Yeah, man. Just crazy, CZ Max. I ended up doing a Magic Find build, uh, but I started off with no Magic Find, too, and it was just that mechanic is just so goddamn cool. I mean, it ruins, it completely destroys the game's economy. But, boy, was it fun. <laughs> you know? I mean, what's a mirror selling for right now today? Probably like 1,200 divines or something ridiculous. I mean, if you're lucky enough to get a mirror drop, you were like rolling in the fat loots, you know? Victory! Where are we going? 309, up next. Stardew, that Stardew update, I'm going to end up grinding it out. Gun in, this, in the Discord server ended up getting a bunch of mirrors, I think. And several people did. Wreck got like multiple mirrors and um like a bunch of mage bloods now mage bloods of course are not worth shit this uh league which is nice because even i got one <laughs> i got a mage blood and a headhunter this league Yeah, anyway, we got the DD2 update. We still got something happening with DDA, and they haven't really clarified or whatever, um, or given us any more information on it. So there's something upcoming with DDA, or something in the works anyway. Then we got, um, what, Stardew Valley on the 19th. We got the PoE League, if anyone plays it on the 29th. Um... There's a lot of good stuff coming. 
Yeah, well, I mean, there's a DD1 update that's in public testing right now. That, I mean, could go live. I don't know when it's going to go live. I don't think they've given a date yet. They may have. I'm not sure, though. But yeah, if you're on the DD RNG Discord, there, there's a, a update right now. Hmm. How do we want to do this one? We have enough DU to go one tree? Or enough uh, range to go one tree? I think we might. Don't have a lot of DU though. See, we would need. We have to move this over further to handle both of these lanes. I'm worried um, about the flyers over here. One's a legendary game, man. It's pretty awesome that they've got full-time developers working on it now. Or at least one, anyway. I'm stacking all the range. That's how I get to max range early. Um, with no upgrades or no buffs. So, I've got Deadly Vicious and... Uh, um... A range mod on it. Why is it not letting me place that there? That is so weird. There we go. All right, we got 140 left, so I underestimated something. We can throw a little more. Did I miss something? Eh, looks like it's all there. Hmm... 140, what do we want to do? Well, I mean, bees are the obvious answer, right? <laughs> when in doubt, add more bees. Oh, you know what? I get a Sky Garden too, and that would handle that flyer issue over there. Uh, I'm not doing any dragons today. I have gone dragon heavy for months now. So I'm definitely not going to do any more dragons today. We are the dragonless run day. Well, I mean, anybody playing it for just for that is going to play something else, you know? PoE is Path of Exile. Oh, uh, there, Chetty. Probably one of the best uh, ARPGs ever made. If not the best, it's definitely in the conversation for which one the best is. I think the Diablo 2 back in the day would probably be uh, up there pretty high in that conversation. I'm not going to be swapping stuff out, y'all. I'm using this today. Next stream, I'll do something different. This stream, I'm using this. <laughs> like I said, I'm on a time crunch here. I got to win 14 more maps in four hours, which is not that challenging to do. But if you start screwing around, uh, you could easily blow past the four hours. 
Diablo 4 is not the best ARPG. I don't think anybody would list that uh, as uh, one of the tops. There's CZ Max. <laughs> I'm sure somebody would. Really, if you think about it, like, you know, I mean, the thing here with everyone watching this uh, stream, we're all grinders. So for us, what Diablo 4 offers is like nothing. And it's because we're grinders. But imagine if you were a two hour or three hour a week player, and that's all the game time you had in. That's the Diablo 4 fan base. You know, and I think in that situation, it's pretty good. It's just it's made for those people, you know, that can only play for, you know, a couple of hours over the weekend or whatever. I mean, we had fun. I mean, that's the other thing about Diablo 4 is, you know, did you get your money's worth? Well, I mean, it was overpriced, and I still think I got my money's worth. And I'll play it again. It's not like I'm never going to play it again, you know? If you play Barb, you only got to play 30 minutes and you win. It's the meta and all the games that start with D, Aramir. <laughs> God, man, why is that bloody not procking? It seems like it's real slow proc rate today. Did not get your money's worth? I mean, I got several hundred hours to play out of it i spent a hundred bucks i bought that super expensive pre-order the day it was announced i couldn't i had to have it one of those things I haven't touched dd2 in like six months hey man nothing wrong with that it's a great game to come back to What? I don't, I'm not really sure what you're asking, was that? Well, that's the thing. You can't compare, these are. How many hours have you played Diablo 4? And how much entertainment value did you get out of it? And is it something you will play again? If you compare it, I mean, nothing's going to match up to Dungeon Defenders games. CC. Uh, I mean, I'm using a boost star and a buff beam, if that's what you're asking. I'm not sure what you're asking exactly, was it? I mean, I spent a hundred bucks on Diablo 4 and I've gotten several hundred hours of play out of it. So, I mean, less than a dollar an hour for entertainment. Well, I mean, while DD2 is free, I've spent a hundred times more, well, a hundred times as aggressive. I've spent 20 times more on DD2 than I have on Diablo 4. But I've gotten 100 times more hours of play out of it, you know? So, yeah, I mean, as far as cost, you know, entertainment value per dollar spent, I mean, I don't even know what my highest would be. I was thinking World of Warcraft, but I was paying that $15 a month subscriber thing. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the problems with Diablo 4 is 
it's more end game issues. The systems in place before you get to that state are not bad. And for a super casual player, the game's going to be just fine for them. You know, it's just when you're when you're that grinder that plays a lot of grind games and a game launches or an update launches or in Diablo's case a season launches and you're going to blast it out 12 hours that very first day, you're going to get through what's available real quick without even getting to level 100. Like you mentioned level 100. I mean, I've only got one or two. I've got two characters that are level 100 now. The game's not rewarding enough to go. It doesn't give you a m motivation to get to level 100, you know? Uh, there's one on YouTube and one on Twitch, but there's only one, so it's going to be quite a while still before uh, those go out. I think Last Epoch does a whole lot of things really, really right. I mean, they've still got some things to fix, but they do a whole lot of things really right. I think it's definitely in the discussion of one of the best ARPGs of the last decade. Yeah, I cringed so hard when I saw that cake. I mean, not that I didn't want you to win. I'm glad you won. But it's like, dude, that is so rigged. Well, I mean, D3's been out for 13 years is what happened there. You won't be able to compare on that note until you, until we get Diablo 4 to a finished state like D3 is. But it's the same thing with, I would guess, literally everyone. I mean, my D3 hours are way, way more than my Diablo 4 hours. There's no doubt. What do we got? Nothing too crazy. I mean, for me, as far as total hours played, uh, World of Warcraft is definitely my most played game. Like, no contest, not even close. Nothing else is even remotely close. Uh, my number two most played game has got to be DD2. I think so, anyway. Number three? I'm not really sure. I'm not even sure what my third most played is. DDA, probably. Maybe DD1. If you looked at my, like, top 10 most played games between all the platforms, the Dungeon Defenders games are all in the top 10. <laughs> I've played way too many Dungeon Defenders games. Is there such a thing as too many Dungeon Defenders games? I've played a lot of them. A lot of hours, that is. I guess going rogue would not be in my top 10. Get a B over here too on these uh, ogres since we only got the two Nimbus. There you go, little B. Have you some fun. Dungeon Defenders going rogue was super, super fun for a few hours. It just didn't have anything else there. Idle champions, I don't think we can count cake. 
That game may have run overnight, many, many, many a night while I was sleeping. Not that DD2 and DDA didn't as well. Uh, when the giveaway happens, there will be something to enter in chat. It's a must be present to win thing. Oh, and DD1? Yeah, DD1, I never got the new, um, the new Defender achievement. Everyone's got their own number, Glizzy. The most important one is the first one. But, I mean, some people will tell you 200 because they're going to sit there and grind it out for a bazillion hours. Other people will tell you 20. Other people will tell you 50. I mean, it's no wrong answer, really. As long as you did it properly, just doing the one is like a minimum requirement. Well, I mean, survival made DDA. If survival wouldn't have been added to DDA, DDA, literally no one would have ever played it. 400 resets to keep up with the economy, <laughs> pretty much. Well, economy broken, ignore it is uh, the best thing there. I mean, nowadays, the only time I throw anything in my shop is to get it out of my, if it's some junk item that I want to get out of my inventory, but I don't want to just scrap it. Uh, controller servo applies to 100% of the enemies if you're using crowd control. If you're not using crowd control, the controller servo does nothing. So it's very situational. As far as the math goes, anti-melee and anti-chaos are superior to controller. And the difference is, is if you're using crowd control, then controller works on every enemy. Where anti-melee and anti-chaos won't. Every enemy that can be crowd controlled, of course. Controller, really, its best use is in if you're trying to get to 999 Onslaught. Is where you'll find it most commonly used. Well, all anti-mods got nerfed. Still mathematically the best thing in the game besides doing like really, really niche diverse builds. Uh, this is an ancient power reset. So it's basically chaos nine. You'll never get to chaos 10 difficulty doing ancient power or you never have to. There's no reason to. That is more focus in the, the 5,000 gold. Every AP reset, you earn an extra 5,000 gold per map in Chaos 10 or higher. Yeah, C10 is floor 700. Man, that sucks so bad. <laughs> I don't drink very many um, sodas, like a Coke or whatever, because I'm old. And that shit will kill you. <laughs> but I do really like them. And I just saw there's a Coke can that I cracked open last night was gonna have me a Coke and I put it behind 
my little water cup. I got like a little anti-spill set up on my regular water glass of water. And I didn't see it. And it's flat now. And I didn't drink it. Big bummer. They add more ancient power bonuses. I don't think they'll add more. Oh yeah, it's undrinkable now. Can't drink a flat Coke. Reese's made sugar-free mini cups? That is criminal, man. Criminal. They should be jailed and fined right now. Tastes like acid. I don't know, man. It's just pretty yummy to me. <laughs> but it's for the best. If you don't like the way uh, soda tastes, that is a good thing. <laughs> so consider yourself lucky. Not old, just wiser. That's what I keep telling the wife. You drink a Mountain Dew like every two months? I probably have a Coke maybe once a week. But I ruined my, I ruined this week's Coke. I'm pretty upset about it. Dr. Pepper tastes like barbecue water. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I've never had barbecue water. I guess I'll have to get a, a Dr. Pepper to compare it. <laughs> uh, not for a while. Like I said, I got one giveaway for YouTube and one giveaway for Twitch, so it won't be happening for a while. If you're here just for the giveaway, you're probably at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, this is my all. I won't do any more resets on my main. I'm just no interest in um, re-leveling all my gear back up again. So the alt, the benefit, well, the benefit I have on the alt is a couple things. First off, when I did all my ancient power resets, we weren't allowed to use alts. So... I did them all the hard way. All right, I can't say the hard way because there was nothing hard about it. I did it the extremely grindy way. Um, so my alt is basically just a material collector. So I don't ever have to worry about gearing or like the only shards I bother putting on them is like jackpot shards and stuff like that. One of your kids likes Dr. Pepper and one likes Pepsi, so you disowned him. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Let's see. What do we want to do here? I think we're just going to turtle at this so I can just chill and chat. We got a absolute truckload of DU. Actually, you know what? I could do one set on each side. Now that I think about it. We got so much DU. I can do something like this. I don't dislike Dr. Pepper. But I don't drink very much of it either. But I mean, if somebody offered me a Dr. Pepper, I would, I would take it. But it's not my first choice, usually either. It 
Yeah, I switched it over last stream. I did it mainly to free up a, a hero slot so I can still be lazy as hell. I'm under, under spamming. We can spam more. Go four. Yeah, it's a full boost uh, reflect now though. So destructive range and health pylon. And anti-heal. So, 100% full utility. What, and we still got 180 left. Holy crap, man. What's going on there, Mango? Mm. Always building it wrong. Because we all know we want bees in here. More bees, please. There we go. We're bead. That would be super cool, JC. I mean, people love the Dryad, though, so I don't think the Dryad will ever be getting any major reworks like that, but that would be incredibly awesome if there was, like, a queen bee that was, like, the Mama Dragon. What do I play on? On PC? Yeah, EMP strat traps are... Well, they got their 20 DU upgrades. Everything that's 20 DU gets incredibly powerful, you know? It gets, it gets its base damage and upgrades every upgrade. Oh, are you just going with a stun trap and then like a destructive or what are you, are you doing two of the stuns? I haven't tried that yet for AP. I mean, that would be such an easy mode spammer. You'd have to do t go with the tenacity and all on it. That would be the challenge in mastery mode there, Chugger. Somebody asked about the gargoyles earlier, and um, I was rambling about something at the time. But yeah, gargoyles are very good for a AP resets. Plus, they counter um, everything you need countered. It would be quite awesome, though, if, um, I think I'm going to finish up my Lazy Mystic again, too. Like, I had her all squared away back in, like, Chaos 8 days or whatever, but her gear has just been Fisher and an EMP. Nice, nice. That'd be a good combo to use.
What are you doing? Over are you over capping rate and using tenacity on both of them? Uh, because Xbox One and PlayStation 4 won't run the current version of Dungeon Defenders 1 is why. That's why updates stopped for it back a decade ago. Because the platform won't run the game. That has been the thing that has been, that's what Chromatic should have done when they took over. I mean, I understand why they wanted to go the route they wanted to go, because they wanted to kind of do something on their own. But what Chromatic should have done is remade DD1 to look like DD2 and have it run on uh, current gen systems. The game would have sold millions of copies. Oh shit, I didn't die. <laughs> Rock for the wed. I'm sitting here waiting for my respawn timer. <laughs> yeah, the gem minecart or whatever, Ethereum minecart, is that what it was called? That was definitely a good one. Uh, they're different companies with a lot of the same people. Like Augie, the CEO of Chromatic, is the founder or one of the founders of Trendy Entertainment. You want the full history lesson there. You're going to get it even if you don't want it. <laughs> so Trendy Entertainment, which was Augie and a few other people, made Dungeon Defenders 1. It was crazy, crazy successful. They sold it to uh, a company called Insight Venture Capital. So Trendy Entertainment was then owned by Insight Venture Capital. Uh, Insight was didn't was not happy with the financial outcome of DD2, so they were going to shut it down or sell it off or do whatever. And Augie uh, said. Well, let me buy the studio back. And um, bought the studio back. So as far as Augie's relationship with Dungeon Defenders games, it was uh, he was the owner, then he was a board member, then he was the owner again. So it's the same yet different. Did I see the new Contra game? I did not. What about for frost lanes? Are you not over capping the rate? There's CZ Max. Yeah, yeah, he's the CEO. Uh, Augie is the CEO. And like I said, he's one of the original creators of Dungeon Defenders 1. But he is the OG. There's no one more OG than him. Oh, you're just using the Fishers with Evercap on the Frost Lanes? That's fair. That's fair. Uh, going good there, Marcos. Just chilling. Uh, had a little DD2 withdrawal this week. My connection was been spotty the last two days, so I haven't been able to stream. And um, normally that's my DD2 days, uh, Sunday and Tuesday. So glad I could at least stream today. 
and everything seems to be, I don't want to jinx it, but everything seems to be holding up so far. Mine is a good reason, my connection problems. Um, my ISP has been upgrading their network on my road or my neighborhood where I live. My connection is almost never spotty, JC. I've got gigabit internet. I mean, I've had issues with it, but like ever since I've lived here for where I live over the last three years, my internet has been better than I've ever had it in my entire life. Now, when I lived over at the coast, yeah. It was seriously sketched then. Yeah, before we moved here, I lived right on the Pacific and there was literally no high speed internet available in my area. So I actually had to use, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with it, but a radio wave internet where it required line of sight to a tower and it would send radio waves. That was the only high speed available where I lived over at the coast. And it was, you know, it was sketchy. Same map again, what the hell, man? Are we getting the same map? I hate it when it does that. Check the old inventory, nothing on the alt. Yeah, so I had to have a big, uh, it looks like a satellite dish, the radio receiver. It looked exactly like a satellite dish. And I had it up on like a big 10 foot post. And um, it was hitting a radio tower up on a, one of the, um, not, not necessarily mountains, but one of the large hills. <laughs> going on there missing uh, my day's going good man just kind of chilling playing a little dd2 trying to get my weekly done because i procrastinated like real bad so i got what i got three hours and 51 minutes left i better quit screwing around Just doing an AP reset on the alt. I mean, it's still quite doable. It's just a matter of doing it. I, I tend to not really care about the time and I end up just derping around too much. I mean, even if it was um, temple every map, you know, it just wouldn't wouldn't be that huge of a deal if I wasn't uh, always derping. Hmm, good enough. No Skyguard this time, but be all right. Hopefully. We'll find out. We'll, we may or may not be all right.
Yeah, line of sight. It's got no line of sight requirements. Got good range. It hits like a truck. It's always been incredibly good. And it's just, it offers a lot of convenience. The Nimbus does. Kind of like Dragons. Same boat. It's just, it's a big convenience tower. Then it's cool, thematically cool. Yeah, it's posted on the YouTube on that video. I don't remember who it was. It was a name I didn't recognize. Thanks for following Air Flasher. What's the next game I plan on streaming that I have not played yet? Shit, I don't know, man. Um, I mean, as far as straight up, I never played it before. Um, probably PoE 2. But, like, there's, uh, you know, Stardew Valley update pending. I'm definitely going to stream that. Uh, what up, Panda Bear? There is um, Alpha 22 for 7 Days to Die. I'm debating on actually getting a full-blown server for the community and everything for that. Because it's rumored to that it's going to be uh, full crossplay. Uh, if that actually happens, uh, then we got, um, what, Last Epoch has been the flavor of the month for me personally. I've been playing the shit out of that. I haven't played Helldivers yet, but I'm not against playing it. Everyone says it's an absolute blast. I just haven't, um, I just haven't had a chance. Light Rain, uh, one of the admins on my Discord, is he's been playing Helldivers quite a bit. He's been loving it. Nice, Panda Bear. I do appreciate it. Uh, then what else do we have? Uh, I said Stardew, PoE2, Last Epoch, um, Seven Days to Die, DD2, DDA. Nobody's talking about it, but remember we got that big fat tease for DDA and we never got any more info about it. So there's something in the works with DDA. We just don't know what it is yet. Uh, sales are when the Steam sales happen. Yeah, yeah, the new endgame boss. If it happens, I mean, we just don't know. I mean, I haven't played Seven Days that I modded at all. I do super enjoy the game. Like, Darkness Falls would be a big, pretty high one on the list. Shit. I'm going to be able to get out of this? Looks like it. But I haven't played any Seven... God dang it, really? <laughs> uh, am I really going to lose because of that roller? World tree down. Nope. Got him. Got him. Thank God for the tree, huh? Tree did good. I shouldn't be ignoring it so much. Yeah, set with Seven Days to Die, JC, I've got a lot of friends that play it. There's a lot of people here on the channel that play it that are on PlayStation or Xbox or whatever. And I guess back in the day when Seven Days to Die was the same update on all platforms, um, the servers were cross-play. You know, you could join the same server from Xbox or PlayStation or PC or whatever. Uh-oh. And I lose to an ogre after just saying I was going to pay attention. So 
so there's just so few games, you know, in like in the community here. There's so few games that we can all play together, and Seven Days to Die is one of them, or rumored to be one of them when it when it hits. That's going to be my main problem with getting this weekly done right there, is I just do not pay attention to what's going on at all. Seven Days to Die is an incredibly good game. My only wish for it is that I wish there was a little bit more of a defense element besides just finding ways to exploit the zombies AI. And like right now, the defense aspect of the game is basically just that. Um, exploiting zombies AI. And it's fun to go through and figure out what works and what doesn't work, etc. And I still do it. Oh, Seven Days to Die is way, way more successful than any Dungeon Defenders game. I would uh, not be giving them any uh, credit at all to combine those two games at all. Um, no, I really like the EV2. I don't really have a favorite anymore. I like the EV. I like the Monk. I like the Hunter. I like the Mystic. Um, I like the Engineer. I like the Countess. Once you've played the game for a decade, your favorite thing is to not play the same thing. If you play the same thing every time, and you've been playing the game for 10 years. How are you not bored as fuck? You know? <laughs> so, as far as what hero I'm using the most, I mean, when the new hero drops, I'll probably be using that one the most. What's going on there, Millsy boy? Yeah, that's, I don't think that's anywhere near the same amount of time there, Panda Bear. I'm not sure when uh, he started playing, but I don't think it was 10 years ago. Um, I do Engineer as AP right now. I just generally like hero damage here is more. I play golf games periodically with my wife. Golf games are super fun, but they're super fun when you have someone like either a good friend or some real life person to play with. In th that situation, golf games are an absolute blast. And I mean, same thing with racing games, really. Racing games are quite fun, too. I mean, that's all the wife and I play anymore is either racing games as far as us playing together it's either racing games or uh or golf with friends well those type of games like you know particularly like the golf games Playing with friends completely makes the experience. I mean, you could say that any co-op game is always going to be better with friends. But a game like Golf with Friends, for example, it completely makes the experience. I know, Batman 2 release pushed back to 2026. I just got that urgent... The urgent message...
Bummer. No Batman till 2026. DC can't really hang with Marvel in the movie making department anyway, I feel like. Even though DC is my favorite, Marvel just does the movies better. So no matter, no matter that Spider-Man is a complete bitch compared to Batman, the movies are still usually better. Batman for the win. Poor Batman. Got stuck with DC making his movies. <laughs> Got a dragon lord. I guess I should go shoot on the dragon lord a little, huh? But yeah, with the whole co op thing, I mean, like golf with friends, I wouldn't play that by myself it, it you know it's just not a game that i would play with strangers or play like i wouldn't fire that up and just play around by myself uh with the other games i have to play you know i just wouldn't do that but if i'm gonna play it with the wife then you know we're gonna have fun playing it You're addicted. What are you addicted to there, Omni? Oh, we got this one again. Hell divers. It's one of those games, man. A lot of people are really loving it. Like I said, I haven't played it at all, or I haven't even watched anyone else streaming it or whatever. But I don't know. It, besides the server issues, like they had real rough server issues, I guess, at launch. But besides their server issues, I don't know anyone that has not liked it. Like literally everyone I know that's gaming is just raved about it. Are they still having server issues? They've got that all settled down by now, I'd imagine. Mostly gone away now. That's good. us big stack over here i don't know if we want to do that money oops god i'm so used to hitting f2 and then eight to throw down my destructive pylon that just tells you i've been using that frost strike destructive pylon for too long now i can't quit hitting that button I don't think it ran any faster uh, having the stack split so I'm just gonna do this we'll get a sky guard in too just because why not at least 280 left jeez
Good enough. Uh, I'm at like 59 or something now on the alt. I don't really have a number. Uh, originally the number was 50. I was just going to do the, the free 50 and then stop. But then I ended up keeping on going. I don't even remember. What's that icon? Anybody know? I don't, I don't even remember where I'm at now. But like I said, don't really have a target number. For me right now, the main thing that I'm doing is not actually doing alt AP resets. What I'm doing is farming a massive amount of crafting materials and gold. So one thing about ancient power resets, particularly if you're using an alt, is you do just get an absolute massive amount of crafting materials, you know? So that is the main thing I'm doing. Uh, when it starts. Like I said, not a bunch of giveaways today. Got one on YouTube, one on Twitch. Uh, so I'm not able to just spam them out here today. And I mean, I could open it up for entries now, but what will happen is when I actually do the giveaway, no, whoever, there will be 50 people entered that aren't there to claim. So I'll have to keep re-rolling over and over and over and over and over again. So that's why I don't bother to put it up until the giveaways happen. I think the key there is not introduce more masteries. It's give mastery replay value on a CZ Max. Like if there was a second set of rewards, it wouldn't have to be more hyper shards or anything like that. But say that there was an additional set of rewards with, um, you know, that was gold, defender medals, gems, whatever. Just that alone, and it would be worth doing again. I mean, obviously, unique rewards would be better. But, I mean, I don't expect them to give us more hyper shards. But I feel like in a grindy game like this, having a game mode that's a one and done is not, is not the thing. You know? You want everything to have replay value. Well, I mean, it's got... Yeah, they're not exclusive anymore. That's what the Hyper Shards originally were. They were the Mastery exclusives. What are the chances they're going to add a Panda Barb skin? Well, I mean, I don't think the chances are high. But... I mean, the Barb is already a clown, so why not give it a Panda costume? <laughs> Um, just joking, Panda. Just joking. <laughs> but, I mean, the cosmetics that come, not in every case, but in most cases, the cosmetics that come are going to be um, themed with whatever update comes, you know? I can't imagine we're going to be having a panda themed update anytime soon. Mists of Pandaria Dungeon Defenders 2 edition. I don't think that's going to happen. But you never know. Maybe uh But why stop there? Why stop there and why would you want to waste a panda costume on a barb? You know, why, but why, why stop there, the panda? Because you should be saying, where is the panda hero? You know, if World of Warcraft can do it, then why wouldn't Dungeon Defenders do it, right? A costume would just be a fake panda. If you want a panda, then you want the hero, not the costume, you know?
Well, see that too. It would still it would be a one time playthrough thing. Uh, well, why don't you ask them there, Panda? They don't. I don't have some direct telephone line where they're going to listen to me before they're going to listen to you. The best way to get anything implemented in the game is to have a whole lot of people asking for it. If there's only one people, one person asking for something, the chances of it making to a game are, is going to be non-existent. Yep. If there's a hundred people posting it on Twitter every day, it will probably likely get in. If a hundred people post it in the feedback channel on Discord, it's very unlikely it will get in. It's all about quantity and repetition. But the problem there, uh, Panda Bear, is everyone's going to know it's you. Masteries have been brought up many, many times to them. But the general consensus of mastery amongst the masses is people hate it. <laughs> but yeah, since the day Mastery came out, People have com com been complaining that it was a one and done thing, you know? Well, I don't think they'd want to force you into it. It would make it rewarding to play, not not force anybody where you have to do this to do to get this thing but make it more rewarding to give it some sort of replay value. I mean, if you look at the entirety of the game, the only aspect of the game that requires any sort of skill level at all is mastery. So if you're a person that's looking for some sort of skill level thing where like you have to practice it to, to get it right, The mastery is where it's at. Well, it, yeah, I don't think that's the case. Like I, like I said, I mean, the thing that I personally would like to see for mastery is a second reward tier. Not with hyper shards or any kind of crazy game-breaking shit. Just a reason to do it again. You know, even if it was only defender medals. You know, make mastery the meta way to farm defender medals. Where if you want to earn the most defender medals the fastest, you spam mastery. But you still get defender medals for doing onslaught. You still got defender medals for doing expeditions. Still get defender medals for doing incursions, etc. Well, not so much a gear check since everything gets scaled down. A shard check. <laughs> Because you definitely had to have uh, lots of shards. Mastery is much easier now than it was. Because remember when Mastery first happened, it didn't have, mods didn't exist. So it was all about do you have the shards or do you not have the shards? You know, and then having a teammate. Having a good teammate is always uh, very helpful in all aspects of the game. Shard RNG is way toxic. There's zeroed out. But, I mean, that's what happens in a free-to-play game with a monetization element that gives them shards. I mean, it's... They gotta make money, or we don't get any more DD2. Period. When the money stops, the game stops. So, it's just one of those things. All for One is an incredible addition for Mastery. Absolutely. All of those build, 
build no more than one specific towers. All for one rules the roost on every one of those, right? I didn't think about that, but you're absolutely right. That is a crazy, crazy huge addition. I don't know. I have no clue what the new game mode would be. I actually wrote up a suggestion and sent it to him back several months ago. Not going to get into it at all publicly because it was a private matter between me and them, but I wrote up a full suggestion and sent it to him on what the next game mode should be, and hopefully it's something they do, and hopefully it's something people will like. Let's see who had a slight Kelly on. Last wave, anyway. Wonder how long he's been there. <laughs> Oops. Nah, GD2 doesn't do anything. I mean, they don't really do anything with any of the holidays now. They haven't for years. They used to do, like, a Halloween event every year. And they would do, um... The, you know, the Christmas thing, of course, they still do. That's the only thing they do. Is the holiday, the Christmas holiday thing with the tree which is still there. That would be cool. Uh-huh. If there was like, you know, the meta shards, like destruction, defense rate, all that. Make them targeted rewards. That would be a great uh, addition. That's it, just the original the original maps when the system dropped. That was all the maps in the game then, except for um Actually that was pre onslaught too, so it was pre the keep. Well, more shards in the game equals worse RNG. That's the problem with more shards. Every hero brings more shards, and we've got an already terrible, terrible RNG system that is very, very unfriendly to new players. And every time a new hero gets added, it makes it worse. That's the challenge with the shards and the shard pools. And it's a monetization element. You know, so any monetization element will not be changed. I mean, C11 would definitely be the easiest, most meta route in the game. You know, every six months put out a new chaos tier. But the power creep would be so enormous for the other game modes is the problem.
Yeah, but I mean, it would be other avenues on how to sell shards for real money. Is what it would be. You gotta re realize that shards are a monetization element. Have like five shards focused per region for sure. I mean, that's definitely for mastery. I think that's a great idea. Well, there's no waiting system at all in the game right now with shards. So that's just something that will never happen. That would be an entire engineering system that they would have to take time to develop with a small team with a small budget. So, I mean, that's... You have to balance uh, your wish list with realism in, in DD2, you know? It's one of the toughest things to overcome uh, in, in long-term play of the game. Don't want to jump into Buried Bastille Bastry again. Bring a friend, man. That's the easiest way. Um, they have never posted a job that I'm qualified for. I'm not, you know, I mean, what good would I do for chromatic? Nothing. You know, I don't know how to code in Unreal 5. You know, I don't know C++ or C Sharp or whatever they're using. I mean, it's above my area of expertise. The only uh, qualifications I would have would be for the marketing department. You know, that's just not going to happen. How do you build this, friends? It's an imaginary thing that only happens in the movie, son. <laughs> I didn't see it yet, Sam. And I'm jonesing to see it. And it's criminal that I haven't seen Dune 2 yet. But I have not seen it. I would love pet builds like in DD1. That's, um, that would be absolutely incredible. I was supposed to go see it last weekend and I got denied. The problem I have with Dune and with any movie that hits the theaters is I've got a wife that absolutely hates going to movie theaters. And uh, combine that with the same wife that will give me massive guilt trips if I go see it without her. <laughs> so it's a rough combo. It's a super rough combo. <laughs> I mean, we can probably put this back here and then hit both, both areas with it. And to be fair, my wife can't go to the movie theater without some 700 pound, eight meter tall guy sitting directly in front of her. She is so cursed with that. And that's one of the reasons she hates to go. Like, it never fails. There's going to be some ridiculous-sized human being sitting directly in front of her. No matter what the movie is. No matter what time we go. Did I overkill this lane? I mean, it's, what, three lanes? Well, two lanes plus flyers. I may have. I'll have to look at it. There was a real kick-ass movie theater up in Boston when I went to college. It was a theater that had... Um, it was like a regular restaurant and lounge. And they had... Um, 
like comfy chairs to sit in with a table and wait staff. You could have dinner. It was super cool. It was absolutely great place to go watch a movie. What do we got? We got Windshaper, Kursakazi, that'll do nothing. I think we could probably just do one stack here, right? On all this stuff? I don't feel good about it, even though I think we could do it. Maybe I can at least share a boost our, uh, let's see. Or no, not big enough. Not big enough these days. What even is that lane? Vanguard throwers. Debbie Zaps. Actually, I should have done this over there. And then it covers the flyers, too. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try to. The only way I can go to um, the movie theater without the wife is if a real life friend wants to go see it and she doesn't want to go with them. <laughs> and then she won't. Uh, she won't like guilt me or anything. What do we got? We got 520 left. Quite a bit. We even have down there. Winter is here. I don't like using all the DU right away on this map. Let's see if that will hold. I know the Nimbus is just crazy strong in AP resets, but I always question it because of the cost of the items in the single target aspects they said six weeks after theater launch it should be hitting max Well, I mean, the thing with that, Hunt, is it would just be a daily quest, you know? It wouldn't, they'll, I don't think they'll ever put that daily quest in. And once again, it comes down to, it's a whole nother system they would have to design. Um, where I could see them putting in the daily quest of do so-and-so mastery maps. But it would be the same re reward as other daily quests, I think. here huh I already got six Nimbus down there seems a little overkill here I'll do that So does that mean we're on 314, okay. 
How many does that leave me? I got nine more onslaughts to do. Shit, am I going to make the time? Well, it's only three. I got over three hours. Add defender packs to mastery win, speed, win streaks. I mean, I think that's a good idea. But... Are you going to do the same map and mastery over and over again? Uh, there is almost no cleave range with enemies, uh, Kinder. You can put stuff right on top of stuff, and as long as you have it placed where enemies are not going to run around it, there's, like, practically no cleave range compared to the other Dungeon Defenders games, anyway. Like, you couldn't put a wall that close to a core in DD1 or in DDA. In DD2? Hell, you could put it closer. All right, what do we got? Over here, we got a winner is here. Luckily, I built that one uh, thinking maybe there would be something else over here. We good there. I don't think defender packs are a big generator for them. And that's why they give so many of them out now. I mean, obviously, I don't see their financials, but I would guess that defender packs are not a real big, uh, big cash cow for them. I think that one guy that actually spends real money on buying those gold flares from the black market dealer, that one guy that does that makes up for thousands of other players. I think shards are a monetization element for them. Uh, heroes obviously are. What uh out? -oh. Rude. Yep. Saw that coming. How much does one flare cost? What do you mean? To make or to get? Well, I mean, Muggs has been playing the game for a decade. Muggs didn't buy that stuff. He earned that stuff. He has a massive amount of gold. I mean, Muggs is like... He's been playing the game probably longer than I have. You know? I'm talking about the people who are wallet warriors who have not been playing the game that long that are going to bust out their credit card to get those gold, gold cosmetics. That and Muggs just knows better. He knows that's like the worst way. You know. So Muggs would never be that guy. Anybody with a bazillion AP resets is not the people spending money. They're the people spending time. You know. Oh, how much cash? It's, well, I mean, the system is awful. What is it? Is that the best one? Uh, it's this one? Or is there another one? 360 gems for half a million gold. I mean, that's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. There's a 1440 one. Oh, there it is right there. For four and a half mil. I mean, it's a lot of real money, and it's a free-to-play game, so there's zero doubts that people do it. All right, so where... I don't even remember what core it was. God dang it. I hate it when I do that. It was a Dreadbones lane, right? Was it this core? I mean, I'm not seeing a Dreadbones lane over here now. Uh, 
Oh, there's Dreadbones. Oh, it was that core, but he came from here. Trying to build a DPS hero, which would be good, considering you have Nuke Monk, could swap that gear. You could directly take gear off of a Nuke Monk and plug it onto a Countess. Um, you know, you'd have to get new weapons, of course, but you could plug it onto a Hunter. You could plug it onto a Barbarian. You could plug it onto a Mercenary. Um, who else could you plug a Nuke Monk set of gear onto? Hmm. Yeah, I said the barb. That might be it. Uh, definitely the countess, the barb, the... I mean, the, the engineer. If you'd want to play a hero damage engineer, you could do that. Basically, any hero that has a self-buff can use that set of gear. You know? Uh, why would they lose on healthy power chips? They're always at full health. I mean, a mercenary and a barb instant heals themselves to full every time they attack something. So their health is never low. So, I mean, those would be the ideal candidates for healthy power. Saigard Wompity Womps. $8,600 to buy. Is that to buy one? That's not bad. <laughs> oh, that's to buy all of them. Well, $8,600 for every one, that is... There's no doubt in a free-to-play game people do that. Zero doubt. But then you got the shard shop, you got the defender pass, which, you know, I mean, shit, how many people just here watching just this stream bought the defender pass for their alt? I mean, I did. It's kind of a no-brainer. You know? You get the gems back, so, oop, oop, so why not? Why not buy it for your alt? You know, they've got lots of things, but you gotta remember too, it's it comes down to, I mean, we want those people there. Someone who is gonna spend thousands of dollars on the game is extending the life of the game. We want them, we want more of them. Bring all the whales. If every whale from every free-to-play game could just come over to Dungeon Defenders 2, we would have this bad boy in Unreal 5 screaming in no time. Oh my god, oh. God dang it, man. I'm not doing myself any favors with this weekly quest with the refusing to look at the map. Why stop at Wales? Bring the Krakens. <laughs> but yeah, Wales and a free-to-play game are a good thing because they make the game better for everyone else. Mugs isn't that guy. Everybody keeps bringing up Mugs. Mugs did not pay real money for that stuff. I'm not referring to Mugs when I say that. So please quit bringing up Mugs. I mean, Mugs is a very respected player that's been around for a decade. Muggs is not the guy I'm talking about. Now, Muggs is probably wailed out in DD2 a little bit, but he's not the guy that's buying gold cosmetics. He's got billions of gold. I'm talking about the people that nobody knows their name, that no one's ever seen playing before, and they show up in town with gold cosmetics. That's the people that bought it. Oh, well, it was... People were bringing him up him up on, YouTube, on Twitch as well, Denzimar. 
is what I was referring to. I wasn't thinking mugs in any way, shape, or form. In fact, if it's any player that you know the name of that player, that's not the person that's doing it. All right, now shit. What core was it that time? Was it this one? Oh my god, I gotta pay attention. I have no clue, no clue, no idea what core blew up. Let's do that, and we'll do this. Got any range in there? We got the little goboos. Then I'll attempt to pay attention this time. Uh, no shaming of people in chat, please. I, it drives me nuts that no one stops that shit in the official Discord. They they just let people just bash and bash and bash and bash on people, and it's just so wrong. Whether the person's an asshat or not, they don't deserve that. Oh, I wasn't really referring to you, your cake. But yeah, I see you said something too. You meanie. <laughs> but yeah, no one deserves to be, uh, you know. I mean, as it is, there's such a small percentage of the player base that will actually use discord more or less an official discord server the last thing we want is people being disrespectful to other players just because they don't like what they do or get along with them i'm screwed again aren't i oh my god come on you stupid god damn assassin all right well i know what core it was this time at least i'm putting that stupid wolf on the wrong core every time There's no best time, like Denzimar said. It's do what you do what you want, enjoy the game. Just never ever do your AP reset before getting to Chaos Nine first. That doesn't make Chaos Nine the best time. Everyone's best would be different. Uh, it depends. It's a vanity upgrade. Or do you have enough gold where you can care about vanity items in the game? If you do, then sure, why not upgrade it? If you don't, then don't. Because you get very, very little value out of it. Dreadbones is the shit, man. I mean, it's fully a vanity thing. Like, you can never upgrade any of your rings and play the entirety of the game, including, you know, as high as you can get to in survival. You know? You know what? Let me, uh... I know it's coming from this lane, so let me slam all this mana into that lane. Get a little more juice over here. All right. Must pay attention. Well, I mean, it's put in as a gold sink for vanity purposes. That's why it's so expensive, and you get so little out of it. I mean, that's the reason it exists at that price, or that's the reason that price point exists, I guess I should say. Got too much gold out? And nobody's spending the gold? Well, what's the best thing to do? Put in stupid things that won't really affect anything and give people a reason to spend the gold. Mm, tree saved the day again. You go, tree. That guy would have been all over the core if that tree wasn't there.
Well, I mean, it's you should never expect any decent prices on the Xbox market. There's too much hacked, you know, duped gold in the economy. It can never get better. Because all that gold exists. The only way you could reset the Xbox economy would be to wipe everybody's accounts. And, you know, we all know that's never happening. But all the dupe glitches that Xbox had, and I haven't done them yet, no. I don't have a ton of giveaways today, so it'll be towards the end. Maybe we'll do one. Maybe we'll do a juicy giveaway here uh, relatively soon. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's just no surprises in the market for DD2. I mean, the market's destroyed. There's no point in even acting surprised anymore. Yeah, it's a known thing, a known issue on the Xbox. I don't know if uh, they're going to fix that. I'm on YouTube, too. Yeah, there will be one giveaway on YouTube and one on Twitch as far as the streamer rewards. Why do I know I'm going to lose 16 million times here? Guess I should at least spend the mana, but I'm not even going to bother doing that. Let's see. Yep, that's up top. Mini map's a little deceiving here in some uh, some areas. Uh -oh. Nope. Well, I mean, YouTube, you make zero dollars on Twitch unless someone subscribes to you. Twitch, on YouTube, I get advertising revenue. It's not a lot, but I do make something. Like, if I make five dollars in advertising revenue on YouTube, that same stream with the same amount of viewers on Twitch would make, like, 30 or 40 cents. Twitch is all about the... All about the... Um, the subs and the bits and all that business. Because Jeff Bezos loves his yachts and he wants more. More yachts, please. Is that what it was? A stone wolf? I didn't even look. See, at some point I got to pay attention because... You just get the same exact result over again. What do I got left? Why does it say I have 3,000 of 20? Oh, because I haven't had G yet. There we go. All right, let's see. Let's uh, let's make this idiot proof since I'm clearly an idiot uh, here today. We'll go... Uh, Something like that. No, Twitch uh, is not very sharing with their ad revenue. 
Uh, where YouTube, it's all straight up contracted percentages. Twitch, you got a straight up contracted percentage of a mystery number because they don't share anything with you as far as the monetization goes. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe, I mean, maybe that resolved it. Can I, can I, do I need a full idiopurific fit or was that enough? I mean, they're getting real close over here, too. Yetis aren't helping at all, huh? Everything getting all froze up. Ooh, shit. What is that? That's a roller. That'll be easy. My werewolf can live forever versus that roller. There we go. Finally. Now I can go back to not paying attention again. <laughs> we'll tag it. A little not paying attention goes a long, long way. There were not dupe glitches on PC, but there was people hacking. Well, I mean, there's been dupe glitches on every console at some point in time through the history of the game. But it didn't get heavily abused as far as I'm aware on PC. We got the forest crossroads. Still no 10 out of 10 mods. Uh, it's very similar. It's almost more of a personal preference thing. The Nimbus are start slightly stronger. The Nimbus has actually always been really, really good. It's just, it's been, it was single target for so long and no one wanted to mix anything else in um, with their single target defense. But the Nimbus has never had an era at all where it's been bad ever since it launched. It's just always been a super, super powerful defense. I think we can just, I mean, I am doing way too many turtle builds today for saying I wanted to get these maps done quick. Here I go again. God, do I should I at least do two stacks? <laughs> it feels so wrong. Yet feels so right all at the same time. And finally, I do a turtle boost build where I could actually play the the initiate. And what do I do? I take the initiate out of my deck. Oof. Nah, it's all on one PC. Yeah, dragons have better AOE, Nimbus has better single target. So, I mean, it comes down to really personal preference. 
I mean, you can use literally anything to go through alt AP resets. You're doing, you know, I say this all the time, but you're doing Chaos 9 in Chaos 10 gear. As long as you have shards and mods, you can literally use anything in the game. And you're going to be just fine. Go ahead and turn around there, homie. Go ahead, turn around. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have turtled it. It was pointless. Since we had, I didn't look and see we had a roller lane. Uh, play Chaos Nine. I mean, all of the gear is dependent on what you're playing. We got another one. Sorry, I was tabbed out for a minute. First time getting to catch a stream? Well, nice. Welcome, welcome. Oh, man. Come on, dude. Really? Are you really going to spin loops in the spawn? At least he turned his butt to me. Come on out, homie. Oh, he's doing it too. What the hell, man? He's like, nope, I'm out of here. What in the... Crazy. All right, what do we got? We got 10 left. Let's uh, clear a little of this out. To do something up here where we can ignore... We'll just go with a uh, destructive pylon. Oh, that is not a recent bug. <laughs> that is a bug since day one of the game existing. Every, th every action to third person or even first person, for that matter, action defense game ever made has had that issue. Uh, there's a video on my channel called Efficient H of Power Resets. I would suggest watching that. Because it's you're going to want to tweak the setup depending on what reset you're on. I think Sanctum probably had the least stuck mobs, maybe. And it still had stuck mobs of all of the popular uh, action defense games. I do think Sanctum had the least amount. I don't know if it was, I mean, the camera perspective wouldn't make a difference there. You wouldn't think. So it being first person instead of third person, I'm sure had no effect on that. I think it's a matter of where they spawn. Like in Sanctum, the it didn't have like a set spawner. Sanctum was more about building the maze, you know? So like no one spawn camped. That and it required more activity. So that of course discouraged spawn camping as well. Where the hell is Sanctum 3, man? We are so deserving of a Sanctum 3. Everybody needs to ping Coffee Stain Studios on Twitter. Give us our Sanctum 3, damn it. Uh, I won't be doing the giveaway. Well, like I said, I'll probably, I'll do a, I'll set up a juicy giveaway. Here, how about we do that? I can't do the big giveaways yet. Cause we're too, we're not close enough to the end of the stream. 
but we can be we could do juicy giveaways we'll do the first one on twitch let's go hashtag juicy and twitch chat we'll do uh one on youtube right after but hashtag, hashtag juicy on twitch chat and this will be for the juicy item of your choice for dd1 dd2 or dda up to you Give you guys a minute to enter it in here. We'll I'll pull it right when uh, we hit zero mobs in wave five. How's that? doing shit man i still need eight more maps i'm gonna have to quit screwing around here at some point if it gets too close where i'm looks like i don't have time i'll swap over and do like a couple of floor ones or whatever just to blast it real quick before it resets All right, hashtag juicy in Twitch chat. We'll do a YouTube giveaway right after. Um, I'm gonna draw it as soon as the counter hits zero. Yeah, for sure. That's quite nice. Uh, no doubt. I think it's 30 DU more better. I don't think it matters which wall you use as long as you have it properly sharded and modded. I don't use anything at all thinking that it's superior to something else. Because every time you throw that whole conversation into the mix it's always a matter of opinion and situation you know oh come on dude at least he turned around where my gargoyles could get him quicker all right here we go while we are loading here, the winner is Venic. Congrats there, Venic. Uh, let me know in chat. Uh, it was posted on that video, but you just won this giveaway just right now there, Venic. 
So let me know in chat what item you want. Um, a DD1 item, a DD2 item, or a DDA item. DDA, very nice. Let's see. Get you fixed up here. You want the pet, I'm assuming? Uh, there's a mask too, but the pet looks way better. The mask looks awful. <laughs> uh, I just whispered it to you, so just enter that in in the little redeem. Uh... Enter that at the little redeem section at the title screen. I'm just going to sell this crap off because it's really eating up my space here. Need to punch it up a notch here. I'm just going way too slow today. Yeah, the DDA pet looks nice. I agree. Nothing on the alt either. Boo. All right, what do we got? Carnival, Timmy. Throwers, Orca Shord. Guess we might as well give it a little bit of protection here. Yeah, let me build the map real quick first, though. And while uh, Wave 1's running, I'll get it set up. But it will be... Uh, We'll have a YouTube giveaway going here in just a moment here. two trees hmm I'm eating up the DU we're gonna have to go three I think that works out 280. What do we have here? Lava Zerker Womps. We can just slap them right up front. Yep. Not enough juice. I think that'll be fine, though. I'll slap the hundred over here. There we go. All right. So let me get logged in on the bot over to YouTube here. Yeah, sorry. It's a little weird. I can't do them at the same time though. The bot gets confused if I try to log into YouTube and Twitch at the same time with it. All right, so give me a uh, hashtag juicy in YouTube chat now. Hashtag juicy in YouTube chat. See, there's a game ogre lane. I'm not even really sure. Uh... I'm not sure which lane it was. Maybe I should look at that. 
think it was one of these. No? No, oh, there's not a game ogre lane. It was, it was, must have been the carnival. I saw a bunch of ogre icons on the map. We'll go, um, we'll go to the end of wave three. Two hours and 28 minutes for seven more maps. I gotta quit this cutting it close crap, you know, on the weekly. Blame, uh, blame last epoch. <laughs> Raining on the enemy's parade, indeed. Somebody's got to do it, you know? All right, at the end of the wave, I'll draw it. So if you're just joining, get your hashtag juicy in Twitch chat, or in YouTube chat, pardon me. And uh, we will draw it at the end of this wave here. Only once needs to be entered there, Derpy. In fact, do I just disqualify you for spamming it now? I won't do it. But there's no need to spam, man. Only once. It only takes only once. All right, here we go. Now, the winner on YouTube has to send me a message on Twitch, Twitter, or Discord as YouTube does not have instant messaging. So just so y'all know. Uh, so it's in your court if you win. And the winner is Denzelmar. Congrats there, Denzelmar. So send me a message on YouTube or on Twitch, Twitter, or Discord with what item you would want, DD1, DD2, or DDA. And I will get you hooked up. Let me just go ahead and shoot myself in the face there off that reflect uh, bubble. Because, you know, why not? right here good enough
Big old bubble popping. He dead. All right, cake. Have a good night. What's going on there, Mitch? How you doing? Jeez, man, we got the we got the new sewer map. Still no ten out of tens on the alt. Boo. Got a game ogre over there. Take advantage of this. Uh... Yeah, let's do it. Take advantage of our uh, our lovely little. Um... Thick vine shard there. We can do the same thing here. We got enough now. We don't have enough range. We can do this though. me well it leaves me a little bit I'll just throw a couple more randos over here hmm how do we want to do it yeah let's give it all the stuff that should work Hopefully. What's up, Gandalf? How you doing? Little ogre getting uppity. We got a cat him up top. I should have put the Nimbus over here further and just given him another tree. Let's see. We'll hit these guys. Uh, we can upgrade the tree too. Get a little more value out of the thick vines there.
Did a map yesterday, got three tens. Nice. Yeah, it goes like that sometimes. Take the RNG while it's there, you know? I'm gonna go grab uh, a glass of water real quick while this is running, y'all. Bear with me, I'll be right back. Siege Roller! It is one seriously slow rolling Siege Roller, huh? Oh my god. I mean, good thing. <laughs> AFK and a Siege Roller shows up. for subscribing there, Isco. What's up, Corporal? How you doing, man? Welcome, welcome. God dang Yetis, man. Yetis always ruin the party with their freezy freeze. Just hopped off of Lasty Pot. So hard to turn that one off these days, isn't it? Been leveling a lightning sorcerer build. How do you like it? I've been thinking about a uh, mage type build to use or to make, but I'm not even sure. Like the rune master seems too spammy. Um, with all the buttons, constant button spam. I don't think I'd enjoy it. But I'm wondering if I would enjoy any of the other builds. Static orb, getting it done. Nice. My next uh, character... I'm still working on that totem slinger, but my next character will probably be uh, a marksman. I really like like multi shot from Diablo three, so I'll probably end up doing that multi shot, uh, that multi shot build with rapid fire and multi shot. Nah, that was uh, last epoch. It's a new ARPG that launched a few weeks ago. Or left early access a few weeks ago, I should say. Uh, I did not. Not really something I look for. Uh, I don't look for YouTube videos about DD2. I just play the game. And make videos. But, I mean, when you've got every tool in the book, why would you use something like that? I don't know. I just, I feel, I, I see the power in the Thick Vines reset builds, but to me it seems like the maps run too slow. 
I mean, when you've got so much power to put out there and you use something that's like the lowest hitting dot or the lowest hitting um, aura type thing in the game, I think people are using it because they can, not because they think it's really efficient or effective or whatever. Sniper. The nosebleed is up top, right? Right now the nosebleed's right here. Good old sniper war bleed. This one runs nice and quick, at least. This map is a great tree map, but it's because of all that little areas like this. I did that AFK, that Sunday chill build a few months ago on this map. Just so good for it. Yeah, if there was more, I considered doing like a little review, like build review or reaction videos, but there's just not enough people that make DD2 content that I would want to promote. I mean, there's almost no one in my community at all that does YouTube. And we're getting the exact same maps just over and over and over again today. Crazy. Nothing there either. Arambe, I don't think, does much YouTube, does he? I don't think he has time. He works a full-time job and streams. YouTube takes a lot of time to do it properly. I mean, you can spam out little clips from your live stream VOD or whatever. But if you want to actually do any quality videos, it takes a good bit of time investment. I mean, what, is he doing one video a month, though? Or, I mean, I haven't seen him do anything. But I haven't looked, either, to be fair. I'd have no problem with uh, giving Harambe a little love, as I have always. Do him like this this time so it runs a little quicker. God dang it, man. That whole switching to F2 for my Frost Strike aura is just a terrible habit. Well, I mean, nobody made builds. <laughs> if you think you're the one that made a build in DD2 just because you're the person who made it a video, you're delusional. 
there is no build that was made by one person that this person has ownership over this thing. It's just ridiculous to even think. I know that that's a thing that people do in every video game, but let's see. Let me check out old Harambe's channel. Let's see, let's see. He has done four videos in the last month. He's done nine videos in the last six months. And it looks like other than just one or two, it's all live stream cuts. Need to get on old Harambe and tell him to get to the YouTube. -ing. Yeah, but the originator is never, ever in any in any situation a person that's live streaming. And when there's when you get to use three of five valid options, is it really something remarkably new and exciting and worth claiming ownership over? I mean, there's so few setups. We really, when you look at it. I mean, that would be like me saying it was confirmed by Chromatic that I had the world first relic with all 10 out of 10 mods. Does that mean everyone who's ever had a relic with all three 10 out of 10 mods is using my build? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? But there's just so few valid things in the game that, you know, I mean, it's like you're picking three of five things. CG tests lots of builds. I mean, I'm not. This is not a CG bashing stream, but come on, really, really missing. You really think CG tests literally anything? <laughs> I mean, every update releases with a million bugs. Come on, man. They do not. No games do. I mean. You know, Diablo doesn't. The what's overpowered or whatever for game balance, that is always found by the players. It's never found by the developers. They're not my builds, though, Quatrax. You will never, you have never, and you will never hear me say, this is my thing that I created. I mean, if you use a build off of a video I do, great. It's not my build. It's a Dungeon Defenders 2 build. But yeah, I mean, every game out there, all of the overpowered things are always found by the community. They're never found by the game developer, ever, in any game. It's, you know, I mean, you got, what? Like, a, I don't know how many people Chromatic has on their their testing group. They're, they don't really have an external testing group anymore, like RQA, like they used to have back in the trendy days. They've got a group, but they don't do testing like RQA did. Um... They've got employees that are QA, that are internal employees. I don't know how many people there are, but say there's three. You know, you got three people testing something versus you roll that update out to the community and there's thousands of people testing it, you know? What's good and what's bad is always, always, always found by the community. The reroll element thing, I think it's great. Which update in DD2 was the best? Uh, probably the Wipegeddon update from Early Access, where they wiped all the characters. I think the Chaos 10 update was pretty good because that's the first update they've had in forever where it added any diversity to the game. Where like in Chaos 10, you can use literally anything you want. No, nah, their original Grumpy Pet was from uh, buying the Collector's Edition. Um, that was the second round of Grumpy. Wasn't from a pet, though. I mean, a pet, in my opinion, a pet added to a game is never going to make that update good or bad. It's just one of the things on the side. 
Yeah, the it's one of the two. I don't remember which. Um, I'm assuming it's the original collector's edition one. The original collector's edition one had no empowerment stats. And then the one from Wipe Again they rolled out, I think, did. I don't have all the pets. I don't have the... Um, the Sodium Champion. And I don't care. You know, they sell for so much, there's just no way I'm going to spend that much gold for something I just am never going to use. There was a time where I cared about collecting all the things. That time is long, long past. Many, many, many years over. And now the markets are just so blown out that, you know, I'm just not even going near anywhere that. Those were the small external tester group. They weren't the RQA uh, full-time tester group. I was on the full-time tester team, so I didn't get one. That was for the remote playtesting people back when they did remote playtests. They used to have a group of like a hundred people or whatever that signed up that could remote playtest um, updates and give feedback like a week before or two weeks before an update launched. And then there was the RQA team, which means remote quality assurance. And that was the people that were actually going 40 hours a week and um, year round. And I was on the year round team, not on the temp test team. We got robbed. <laughs> they should have gave it to us too, but they didn't. Yeah, they're planning on expanding out. Uh, it's not going to be like they were before because before they had a full time employee running it, Danny. They don't have a full-time employee running it, so it won't be quite like it was before. But they do plan on expanding out. They just haven't, um, they haven't gotten the system all dialed in yet. They'll get it. They just haven't gotten it yet. It won't be like before, though. I mean, nothing will ever be like before. There's not enough money. You know, they just don't don't have the amount of personnel to do what they were able to do before. Yeah, I'm surprised anybody would want it on Xbox. Like, the majority of them are duped. Well, I'll give you a big old clue missing. It's the old Betsy with a different coat of paint on it. <laughs> no, no need to get too worked up over it. They're all the same. It's the old model with a new texture slapped onto the outside. Are they putting in it? I saw them talk about it. Are they, have they confirmed for sure? There's going to be a new Betsy pet. I mean, it's a good looking model. The pet itself is really good. All of those early models were really good looking. All that, all that matters in the next update is a seahorse. If there's not a seahorse pet, there's going to be riots. The Betsy pet doesn't, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as big as a seahorse. There's got to be a seahorse. They've already said they're not giving us Aquanos. Not giving us Aquanos is damn near a criminal offense. Especially when you got shitty maps like Ember Mount that nobody asked for that they added in. Where Aquanos is a fan favorite map that's being been asked for for like 10 years now. And they already said they're not doing it. Which is fine. But they gotta at least give us a seahorse. Well, nothing in the game lives up to the DD1 counterpart. Literally nothing in the entirety of the game 
that has a DD1 version and a DD2 version. The DD1 version is far superior in every case. They said that the they did they wanted to do a map on their own and not uh, do another another uh, rescan or copy paste or whatever. Which I understand because that's been one of the biggest criticisms for all of the Dungeon Defenders games is they reuse the same maps over and over again. Where in I mean in DD two they at least like this map is a re is a uh, reused map from DD1 but they gave it enough of a fresh coat of paint where it feels like something different no pet matters Dragalich, for God's sakes. You can literally use a Dragalich successfully in every aspect of the game. They made Dragalich so good that no other pet really matters. You know, even like the Cyclone or the Sandstorm or whatever. None of that matters. Because even though it's more of a value for you personally to use... Dragalich affects every other player and every defense on the map. Yeah, this one, they they definitely did it up. This is really the last one of the ones that they really converted it to give it its own feel. Uh, a thousand times over. The best time in the game was in early access. 99% of players that played in early access would all agree on that same fact. It was an absolutely amazing time in the game. It was a loot-based game. You were grinded for loot. You may have gotten that item, that super shiny item, on the very next map you do. Or it might take you a thousand runs. It, it was the nature of a loot-based RNG. Rolla, rolla. I mean, that's what made me fall in love with the game, you know, was early access. Well, I mean, like I said, you can use whatever you want, but as long as Dragalich is a thing, nothing else matters because it's good enough to complete 100% of the content. Uh, the end game was a loot farm. It was Nightmare 4 was the highest difficulty. It was about farming loot. It wasn't about farming a number on a screen or farming crafting materials or whatever. It was all about the loot. So if you made it to Nightmare 4 and you were able to do, say, Life Root Forest, the very next map you do, you might get the absolute god roll piece of gear that you were looking for. Lifeward Forest was one that was a big farm spot back then. It was all about the loot. And then they completely went away from that with the shards and mods, etc. Actually, shards were there then, but mods, they completely went away with it from mods. Actually, no, shards didn't show up until Chaos 1. So yeah, shards weren't there either. All of the shards and mods were created from the old loot. The stuff used to be a passive on items. And you would farm the item that had the passive that you were looking for. And it was, like I said, it was just, it was all about the loot. You know, it's a different game. No, nope, there was no trading. Oop, shit. I just started the wave, didn't I? I got 70 seconds. Better decide what I want to do here.
put that there for last resort flyers, I guess. Plenty of time. Good enough. Hopefully. All right, take it easy there, Missin. Enjoy. Well, that's the thing is the passives, the gear was set. It wasn't a headache. If you like farming loot, it was a loot farming game. That's what Dungeon Defenders was built off of, is loot farming, where now it's not. Now it's your farming crafting materials. With the exception of, like, that's why the weapons were added in, I'm pretty sure, to try to add some of that back in. Like, the only element of that DD2 has is the weapons. Well, I mean, that's the reason the game still exists, Glizzy. The shard shop was a big part of the game's early monetization. If it wasn't for that, the game wouldn't be around anymore. Very likely wouldn't. I mean, shards, you could spend, you can upgrade your gear all the way up to Chaos 10. Why does the shards bother you? you the material vault is the, or the material um, vendor is the, the real pay to win. Shards are just a massive, being able to pay for that is just a massive convenience. How many more maps do I have? Oh, I only need four more. And have almost two hours. Plenty of time. I can go back to dirt mode. Yeah, you can, there's a vendor you can buy all the mats with, with gold, or with gems. I was talking about the vendor, not the material vault, Kinder. We're talk, referring to the what you can pay for with real money. I mean, obviously the material vault you can pay for with real money, but that wasn't the context of the conversation. I just misspoke and said vault. Uh-oh. Wait a minute, that's a eyeball. Something threw at this core. I'm not sure what it was. Not in a few upgrades won't resolve, I don't think. Uh, the, it, those issues, Cassie, are engine issues. Those are not resolvable. The fix for loading times is the, is the shard vault. Uh, I am never going to go to 999 Onslaught. Well, I don't want to say that. As soon as there's a reward worth going for. As long as it's just a time grind and it's completely trivial, I won't do it. It's a waste of my time. I want to play stuff that I'm having fun playing. There's no fun in that for me. I mean, when the meta strategy for pushing to 999 is re-roll maps over and over and over again until you find the map you like, I'm out. As soon as I see that. It's the same reason I rarely go to GR150 in Diablo 3. Because if it turns into the reroll game, I just got better things to do with my life. I'm never going to do it, y'all. I personally wish that they would remove that aspect from the game. Because just that number 999 has caused... 
has created so much bullshit in, amongst the Dungeon Defenders community. It's turned complete fucking nubs into elitist douchebags just because they beat 999. Like, big fucking deal. So you rerolled the map for four hours after grinding 300 hours to get to that point. It's an aspect of the game I don't like. And part of it, remember, was because I was an old player. And I was a player that got jabated by the new Onslaught. Onslaught used to be endless mode. They'd removed it, and they told the players Onslaught is coming back for like six months. So we all thought endless mode was coming back. And then they brought Onslaught back in its current form. Well, I mean, three people on every team got carried in 999. <laughs> you know? But are you really getting carried when you're on your barb slapping down a lane? Anyway, yeah, I'm just not interested in all. Um, I'm sure there's tons of videos of the old Onslaught mode. I mean, it was in the game for years. At least a couple of years. I don't know how long it was there. But it was there the first few years I played. I've never removed any videos. So all those old videos should still be up somewhere. No, that wasn't the... That was this Onslaught system, Dark. <laughs> the old Onslaught system, there was no chaos in the game yet. That was this current Onslaught system. My first video was Orcs Must Die 2. That's what made me start the YouTube channel was OMD2. I didn't start off as a Dungeon Defenders guy. I was full on Orcs Must Die. And I ended up falling in love with Dungeon Defenders later. It was grinding King's game for weapons. I had a friend that played a friend from the Orcs Must Die community that started playing Dungeon Defenders 1. And the thing that really ended up hooking me on the game was grinding King's game for weapons. Uh, it's just a number and a title. It's fun for some people. If people think it's fun, then by all means, that's the way to play it. I'm not bashing on people having a good time. Just for me personally, there is no fun. I don't find joy in rolling, logging in, loading into a map and saying, oh no, I don't like the mutators on this one, reroll it. I don't find any joy in that. Like I said, it's the same, it's the same problem I have with Diablo 3. And it's like one out of every 10 seasons I um, will go to GR 150 in Diablo 3 because because it becomes that game of re-rolling for the the map you want. I used to do a bunch of Minecraft. I had a Minecraft server at one time on the channel. It's not a challenge though, is the thing. What's the challenge? The challenge is finding two other friends because a three-player group is the way to play it. And re-rolling maps. That's, none of that is a challenge. The challenge is your patience level. Getting to that point where you can find your two friends, 
and reroll maps. That's the challenge. It has no like strategic challenge. If you want that, you do the unbeatable game mode, which is survival. Who's making it to the final survival checkpoint right now in the current state of the game? Nobody. I'm sure at some point somebody will find a way to cheese it. But that's the challenge. Something you can't beat is a challenge. But, like I said, if it's fun for you, then that's good. You should do it. It's just not fun for me. All right. Make sure we got no hex throwers doing crazy hex throwery stuff. I don't really like using uh, Nimbus on this one. I love the dragons on this map so much more. Finding friends is a challenge. You get kicked out of games you join. Yeah, you can't find it. You know, you're not going to find the friends in the game. You'll find the friends outside of the game in Discord or whatever. Discord, or it used to be from the forums, was the main source. Only 200 left. So I uh, overbuilt. What can I do to fix it? We can take away one of these since it's at the middle. That still doesn't let me fix it. Hmm. I think I'll get rid of the boosters. Sorry, y'all. I don't normally do Nimbus builds, so I'm not sure the how the DU works out on so many of them. The forums don't get used much anymore. I think Discord just Discord has come a long way over the years. where forums require moderation. I mean, Discord does too, but Discord, you can let go unmoderated a little more than you can forums. I mean, they're still there, but I don't think that they'll ever do like a big push. It's uh, most games, like what? Blizzard games, the forums are all real active. World of Warcraft and Diablo games and everything else. But the forums used to be the shit way back when. Back in my day. DD1 still uses the forums for all their events and stuff. All the community events.
Nah. They'll never bring this back. There's no reason to, really. I mean, it's just a Drago. It's just a different skin. DD1 is far more active than DD2 is. Uh, if you want a community-based game, where, I mean, DD2 has a lot of activity in their Discord, but half of those people don't even play. They're just there to post cat memes. Uh, DD1 has an extremely active community. And they still do regular events and giveaways. And I mean, they do more giveaways than I think they should, to be honest. It's on a separate Discord server. It's a community made. Remember DD2 or DD1, a lot of it, you know, there was a community development team that did updates for the game, community events team that runs all the events and stuff. There's a lot of community involvement um, with DD1. Wish there would be actual four player content. Yeah, it's just not that kind of game, is the thing. Like a raid boss or whatever just wouldn't work, I don't think. Then you gotta remember it's a free to play game that's rated all ages. So what they need to do to keep the game going is put more things in that are going to get more new players playing the game. Stuff for Endgame doesn't get new players playing the game. And then besides like things like the Battle Pass or whatever, it doesn't help them as a company either. Where, you know, obviously the Battle Pass did. I'm assuming anyway. They've added a little bit, but overall, the game doesn't have a whole lot of in-game explanation. I mean, it's how my YouTube channel became a thing. But they have changed it some, and they added, like, there's a new player quest line now. Which even old players should go back and do, because it's re very, very rewarding. That gives you a nice introduction to the new, the different game modes now. Uh, it's a utility reflect beam, there's nothing special about it. It's got destructive pylon, health pylon, and range pylon on it. You can literally do it with any any defense or any relic, no mods. I mean, I've got mods on mine, but you don't need them. You can do the same thing with anything. No, no, not not mastery mode. A new player quest line. There's like a brand new player starts the game and it's you know, do these maps get this, do these maps get that, or whatever, and it gives players kind of an introduction to all the different game modes, and that was never in the game before. So, I mean, they've done things, but yeah, I hear you. It's basically the same. There's very little information available in-game. The tool tips are all terrible. Um... The DPS numbers it shows in game are all terrible. Yeah, the quest that gives you the bag and uh, yeah, do 10 mastery maps is one of the challenges on it. But that's a nice introduction. That and it gives you the meta shards in the game, which is nice too. Anyway, I think they did a good job with that. I think they did a good job with Chaos 10, too. 
adding in a difficulty that adds a lot of diversity where you can use lots of different towers or just defenses in general. And that's all stuff from the, the newer team, the current team. So, I mean, they've definitely done lots of, uh, lots of great things for the game. Damn, still new 10 out of 10 on the alt all day long. What the hell, huh? You haven't gotten a C10 yet? I mean, that's fair. You'll get there. Well, I mean, the reason to push there is that's like the base progression and content of the game. If you enjoy it, you definitely want to get to C10, you know? And then that's where you'll put in most of your grind time for min-maxing and whatnot. I mean, once you have some basic stuff set up at, like, C8, uh, getting to C10 is going to be way, way easier for you. Is that going to work? I think I can do more. Five. Can I do six? I don't think I can do six. No. I need to have 700 DU left over. Or 200 DU left over, pardon me, for the boosts and buffs. If I got 20 left over, which I do, I'll throw it right here. The problem, the survival skip is real nice, uh, particularly with an alt or if you're playing with a friend or whatever, like a real life friend. But the problem people find is you know you'll get into a survival map you'll get up to chaos 10 gear yet you got no shards and you know none of the enemies so you're literally required to get carried or you can't play you know so it's good that that skip is there but it definitely hurts a new player that's taken that route It's one of the videos people uh, have been asking for I haven't made is um, the meta hero for every tier. Every chaos tier. Like if there is a meta hero where like chaos six and EV would basically allow you to easy mode all of chaos six. Chaos 9, if you have a Lava Mancer that has the Fisher of Embermount uh, mod, you're going to easy mode Chaos 9, you know? Yeah, yeah, you can beat them all on Gates with the Countess. Very true. I mean, the Countess and the Dryad would definitely be tiers that, or, or heroes that allow you to basically function in any tier. I mean, besides the dragon, besides Mama, just the baby dragons and the Nimbus, you know, would get you through. But that is very true. Mama, Mama Dragon wins them all.
they nerf Nimbus and Dragon's Nest back to Fisher spam. <laughs> Oh, the dragon is definitely a beast. I like using the dragon way too much, though, so I'll probably never do that video. I get accused of causing all the nerfs in the game anyway. So if it ever got nerfed and I do a video about it, then uh, people would blame me. They don't grasp uh, how real life works. <laughs> The Nimbus AI gets fixed, it will probably make the Nimbus, like, ridiculously meta. Yeah, there's lots of low IQ folks that uh, don't think that way, though, Glizzy. I've been dealing with them for the last decade. Something about the AI of Hunter's Knights bullying behavior. <laughs> the Nimbus has come a long way, though. It's always been a bit of a powerhouse, though, ever since way, way back. Like, I got my very first Chaos 4 win and my very first Chaos 5 win. Like, the only way I could beat maps at the very beginning was with the Nimbus. I would do Temple and Necrotic, and I'd do two big Nimbus stacks. I would put one over by the short lane and then put one on the... Um on the main core where all those lower lanes combine into. At the time, it was the only way I could beat it. I still remember that. And then, back then, the Nimbus was, it was a bug, but the Nimbus was actually true AoE. Like it was doing a lot of AoE damage. So it was melting absolutely melting lanes that would be super cool but that would be something that would need to be in the next game they, they couldn't add that system in on to dd2 that would be an awesome system for dd3 DDA had it. Uh, priority targeting, you could change it. Yeah, Motherly Instinct is a random drop, no map specific. I think there's a minimum tier. Let me look, I'm not even sure what it is. Let me check real quick though. Let's see. I don't know, it actually drops in any tier. So, I mean, you could get that mod in campaign if you really wanted to. I wouldn't encourage anyone to grind campaign for it, but you could if you wanted. Oh shit, what are we doing? I'm on three floor 321. Oh, God dang it. Nobody said anything. <laughs> I went over. 
I went past the AP reset. Uh, C10 gear starts at uh, wave 61. Uh, Glizzy. I play all the Dungeon Defenders games. I play whatever Dungeon Defenders game got the most recent update. DDA gets an update, I'll be playing DDA. DD2 gets an update, I'll be playing DD2. DD1 gets an update, which is coming, I'll be playing DD1. Alright. Check the gear real quick, and then we gotta go get the AP reset going. Last Epoch is incredibly good, yeah, I'm full-blown hooked on it. I'll be playing it tonight after uh, dinner for the entirety of the evening. If you like ARPGs, Last Epoch is one you've got to take a look at because it's just real good. Hmm, I got one Melee Boom mod from that AP reset. I got one 10 out of 10 mod in that entire AP reset. On my alt. A melee boom. Alright, let's go out to town and get that next reset done now that I transferred the mo the, the relic. I've got a level 100 Void Knight. Um, I've got a soon to be level 100 uh, Totem Shaman. I've got like a level 97 uh, Necro. I've got a level 80 um, uh, Falconeer. And next up, I'm going to do a Marksman. Right now, I'm still working on the Totem guy. It is an absolutely incredibly good game. Uh, without question. Uh, that's been, just been lots of hours. Uh, they're a healer. I've been playing the living dog shit out of the game. Okay, that was 69. So now we're working on 70. We hit the magic number. Do we stop here? We're at 69. All right, what do I need for my quest? I need one more Onslaught map. Well, that's good. So now we're back down to 261 after the fresh AP reset. I put an unhealthy amount of hours into the game here. But I mean, it takes, you can get five characters from zero to 90 in the amount of time it takes to go from 95 to 100. It definitely slows way, way down. That might be an exaggeration, but you, you get the point. It slows way, way down. Like it took me a full day's grind, like 12 hours or whatever, just to go from 99. But yeah. Like I said, it came along with just playing for an absolutely unhealthy amount of hours. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right. What are we going to do on this one? Winter is here. I think we can probably do one stack in the middle of the map, huh? Maybe? Or should we do two? Two might be better. Because like this side of the map definitely benefits from having its own stack. 
And then this side of the map benefits from having its own stack. I think that may be unnecessary, but whatever. We're doing it anyway. We're doing it anyway. Yeah, don't delete my gear this time. Sadly, that is not the first time I've done that, Cassie. <laughs> it has happened before. Just can never learn my lesson on that one. One hour and 17 minutes. So I made it with an hour to spare. Uh, assuming this... Uh-oh, uh -oh, what do we got going there? Guess I shouldn't celebrate yet. The win is not in quite yet. Well, you can lock your gear, but like in this situation, what was happening is I was doing the floor 261 and then accidentally selling all the gear and zoning before I equipped any of it on my um, alt to get the C9 unlocked. Yeah, buff stack. So if you use a, a, a buff beam and a boost star, they both buff on top of each other. They don't buff each other, but they both will buff the defense. Getting it here now. Oh, this is why the shapers were getting shots down there. I think that's why I took that core damage. out so quick could almost benefit from having a wall or something over here Oh, the difference between the two? I mean, they're very similar. The boost star has more utility, where the uh, buff beam doesn't have a lot of utility, but the buff beam has the diffusion shard, which uh, is a range boost. And basically, you can get away with not using deadly strikes or vicious strikes on anything. Um, if you use diffusion and then you've got a range pylon on whatever you're putting your destructive pylon on, it just gives you, I mean, every defense has its own scaler, but 
in most cases, you will never have to use like a deadly strike shard or a or a vicious, uh, for that matter, and get the wins. But they are very similar to each other. If you're only going to use one, I would probably say go with the boost star just because it's got utility that the buff beam doesn't have. But, you know, for maximum power, of course, you'd want to use them both. God dang, man, that Shaper is just OP. Where was it thrown? I guess it had a pretty sh clean shot at it. I mean, there's no point in even putting this here, is there? Um, If you want to get to Chaos 10 the fastest, that would be the way to do it, yeah. Just do it on a mule so you don't accidentally get rid of anything that's good. And, you know, just pick a pick a character that doesn't matter what their gear is and just auto equip every every wave and do it every wave. Survival is the only place in the game where what you have equipped matters for drops. the drops are going to be based off of your current champion score. I actually need to do a video on that. Um, talking about what it takes to go from zero to chaos 10. I'm not sure how many waves it takes. It pro I mean, RNG is a factor. There's like some kind of, it seems like there's come some kind of a hidden system where Although you can bring a lower end character in, it's bugged. What is bugged? You could bring a low end character in. Well, no, the problem is, is it's super, super slow early. I mean, I've taken them from campaign level to Chaos 10 dozens of times. Well, I mean, 50 resets worth. Well, I guess it wasn't 50. 25 AP resets worth. But it's really, that's what I was getting ready to say. There's some kind of a hidden system where if you're in, like, that case, a Chaos 2 champion score or Chaos 3 champion score, and you're doing Chaos 10 level survival, you get almost no drops. So that makes going up really, really slow. All right, that completed my weekly. Very nice. Right. Why don't we? Why don't we jump out of here and get a complete that daily too? Oh, it's two Steam accounts. So if you just Google how to run two Steam accounts on one PC, it'll give you like a dozen different options. Most commonly used is a program called Sandboxy. It's free. Yeah, it goes up. The further you climb, the faster it goes. Like, you'll get from Chaos 9 to Chaos 10 champion score in, like, two waves. The higher you are, the faster it goes. Where it might take you five waves to go from campaign, or maybe even ten waves to go from campaign to, to Chaos 1. From Chaos 9 to 10 will literally be, like, one or two waves. It's not bugged. That's intended. It's just however that culling system or whatever they're using that's allowing you to ignore gating. Mana gain ship. Boo! Whatever system it has in that's allow allowing lower champion score players to get into the higher champion score maps or waves is also I mean they haven't said anything officially but 
it feels like to me that it's directly associated with that, especially considering the higher you go, the faster you get it. Well, it's super quick. I mean, you know, like I said, Chaos 9 to Chaos 10 in literally one or two waves. Oh, shit. I just did it. <laughs> I sold all my crap. Let me see. Let me move my crap back out. And nine. <laughs> uh, what a what a dumbass. I do that literally every time. Okay, there's gloves, a chest. Oh no, I don't have any boots. I gotta do another map anyway. <laughs> Yup, no boots. God, what a bummer. That's all right. Let me just pop in and do another map. And then there's the RNG element. Like I said, RNG is a factor. Like I've had characters where it's gone super, super fast like that, like instantly, just a few waves and boom, you're there. And remember, if like 90 percent, or it seems like about ninety percent of the drops aren't there when you're low level, then the RNG is even bigger. Nah, it's definitely not the case. In fact, you have less chance at survival because ten out of ten mod drops are on a timer, basically. The guaranteed ten out of ten mod drops is every so many mod drops, and since you get so much less gear. I mean, you just got lucky there. But there's definitely not more 10 out of 10s in survival. In fact, I can tell you my experiences, I get like no 10 out of 10s in survival. So you got lucky, just take the luck. Take the luck and run with it. And there's nothing wrong with having a little luck, you know? But yeah, I have terrible, terrible luck with gear in survival, as far as mods go. I've gotten my fair share of godly drops, but as far as 10 out of 10 mods, I don't get shit in survival. All right, what do we got left? We got 620 left. Three hundred per lane. It'll give me a little bit extra for the other side. And just need a pair of boots to drop here. That way I can jump in and do Chaos 9. All right, what do we have down here? Timmy? All Good enough. Get me some booties. And we'll get some uh we'll get some of the good giveaways going. So I got an RGB headset, uh one for Twitch and one for YouTube. And then I've got one theater mask. I love doing survival though. I wish I got more 10 out of 10 mods there. That would be so awesome. When I got up to 500 godly orbs, I said, 
screw it, enough survival. And I stopped, and I haven't really done survival since. You got no godlies? That sucks. Well, keep grinding it. I mean, you'll definitely, you'll, you know, at first it's such a, it's so rough trying to get your godlies, right? But you'll get to the point where they just stack up. I was running survival quite a bit um, for a good while. I mean, I've been wanting that game mode to come back into the game for so long, you know? So I played the living shit out of survival. Yeah, I mean, when it first dropped, I was doing like 10 hours a day i was streaming just about every day and doing like probably four or five hours of survival runs and then at night after dinner i would load into gates you know load into gates of dragonfall queue up a movie and sit there and watch a movie yeah there's no shortage of stuff to grind that's for sure Just, you want to go to Gates with a team, their Gandalf, and do just the dragon build that um, everybody's using. The Mama Dragon. It just wrecks Gates. The dragon is so strong, and having the ability to hit all three lanes is just so, so huge. Got to play active on your Countess. You'll get one. Well, that would be why, yeah. How hero-specific mods work are if the hero's in your deck, you have a slightly increased chance to get it. Like, meaning above practically none. And then if you play the hero actively, you get an additional increased chance to get it. But if you play the Countess actively and do, like, two or three expeditions, you no doubt will have one. And then, of course, if you do it in a group, you're going to get more loot, which um, also will give you more more of a chance of getting it. think taking other heroes out will make a huge difference to be honest now if you had four countesses and you put four countesses in your deck and then you dropped down to like chaos one since um that's a mod that's available at any tier that would be the fastest way to get it but if you just play what you're normally playing but have your countess out actively as your active hero you're going to get one really quick. I mean, it won't, it'll be just a matter of a couple of maps, just doing what you're already doing, you know, without jumping through any hoops. Well, now by active, I mean the character that's out. You don't actually have to be doing anything on the character. You can be very, very AFK. <laughs> I guess instead of, instead of saying active, I should say activated. <laughs> like, this character, I can sit up here on the throne and laugh at the kid who just lost his daddy <laughs> and still earn all of my hunter mods. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm not that mean. Sorry about your pops, kid.
Yeah, that is a terrible thing to say, isn't it? I need to think that one out in advance. As someone who lost my dad at a very early age, I can assure you it is not fun. I wasn't that early. I wasn't as early as old Junior up here, but... All right, come on, be some boots. There's gotta be boots, right? We will find out. Is there boots? There is boots, yay! That's all I got was boots. <laughs> Not really, but I did get a bunch of boots that, ran, that run. All right, so let's start off on, we did the first giveaway, we did Twitch first, so this one we'll do YouTube first. Give me a hashtag cat ears in YouTube chat. I'll give you all a couple of minutes to get entered in. We'll do Twitch right after. Hashtag cat ears. Wow, that's crazy. Not a 10 out of 10 mod all day. Or no, I got one. I got that, that mana gain. When's the giveaway? Right now. Give you guys like a minute or so to get that in. I'll give you a couple of minutes. I know some people will be coming over from Twitch. Give you guys a couple of minutes to get it all entered in here. I got to do one more Ancient Ruins and I'm fully caught up. See what I get next week. Hopefully I get into something nice like Slow Enemies. I love getting that one. The greatest artist of all time dropping a song tonight? Who's that? I listen to a bunch of old music. Cardi? Definitely not my flavor, but hopefully it's good and you enjoy it. I don't listen to a whole lot of rap. I don't necessarily dislike it, but I think the stuff I like is the older stuff. Ice Cube and whatnot. Stop playing DDT after you're set for the first time to be able to get 999 on Ascension when Survival Mode dropped. Um, the game hasn't changed at all since then. So just keep playing, doing what you were doing. Uh, get yourself back up into Chaos 10. But it's the literally exact same game as it was then. Uh, nothing new or out of the ordinary to do. I listened to a lot. I grew up in the... Remember, I came from Northern Ireland to Washington, D.C. And I kind of grew up in Washington, D.C. during the... 
like the old school punk era. So I grew up listening to a lot of punk, and I still kind of like that that flavor. I do listen to all kinds of stuff now, though. Now that I'm an old man, I listen to a lot of reggae and stuff, too. Ah, that's fair. That's fair. It seems pretty common these days. I'll be 51 in May there, Grandmaster Vern. Fifty one in May. And still keeping my fingers crossed that I won't be a grandpa anytime soon. <laughs> Fifty three last Wednesday. Oh man. Well happy birthday. Am I gonna fight Mike Tyson in May? No, Mike Tyson only fights people in their twenties. <laughs> Um, this would be the meta focus power bouncing Phoenix at Lucky Strikes. All right, here we go. Uh, this one's on YouTube. Remember, YouTube winners, you got to contact me on Twitch, Twitter, or Discord. And this is for the cat ears. And the winner is... Oh my god. Beyond rigged. Beyond rigged. I'll let Nightbot post it. Did Nightbot post it yet? Oh, there it is. Yep. Absolutely beyond rigged. We're doing one on Twitch in just a minute there, Jade. All right, Aramir. I'll send you your, your cat ears here as soon as I get done with the stream. I know where you're located. I am not overflowing with Defender Metals. I've only got 7,000. I'd like to go into the next update at the cap, so... You don't have cat ears yet. How on earth did that happen there, Jade? Good lord. It seems so wrong that Jade wouldn't have cat ears. You blame work? Uh, that's fair. Real life, real life continues to happen with or without cat ears. All right, give me a cat ears over on Twitch. Cat ears on Twitch. But yeah, I would love to get to 12K, though, before the update, which, I mean, it resets, the weekly resets in less than an hour. So, I mean, that's a bunch right there. We still don't know when the update's coming either. But I figure with just with the daily and the weekly, that's almost another 2K. That would put me at 9,300. What's going on there, Only Demon? Hashtag cat ears in chat, y'all. In Twitch chat. Give you guys another minute to get it in. And then I got a theater mask, too. Uh, we'll do the theater mask on whichever platform has the most viewers after this cat ears giveaway. Well, you can never overflow with gold because you can just send gold off to your uh, alt or you can um, launder gold through the player shop and leave it sitting there without claiming it. You can hold a whole lot of gold that way. I'll give you an example. 
how to oh no my i already logged my alt out never mind i won't give you an example all right here we go y'all i'll give you 30 more seconds hashtag cat ears if you're just joining And here we go. Good luck, everybody. I've got the code copied, and I am ready to paste it as soon as you win. Glizzy! Grats there, Glizzy. You got you some cat ears. Uh, say something in chat so I know you're still there, which, you know, I mean, you just said something, so I know you're still there. So there you go. I just whispered you the code. Just enter that at the mailbox in game and that will unlock your cat ears for you. And let's see. It looks like uh, Twitch has got far more viewers than YouTube does. So I'm going to do the mask giveaway over on Twitch, y'all. If you're on YouTube, uh, there is a link to my Twitch channel down in the description below. You can head on over there and we can get you set up. Uh, for the mask, the theater mask giveaway. Uh, let's see, let's do... Hmm. Let's do hashtag mask. Hashtag mask in chat. Find that bad boy. Right, I have got the mask code copied as well, ready to paste it. Boy, I better not accidentally uh, control V in chat or anything, huh? Well, I mean, you need all the things, Gandalf. Come on now. <laughs> All the things. Look, Jade, I figured I'd better show you. I finally fixed my Countess's gloves. <laughs> I went without a mod on those gloves. I only had two mods on those gloves for a year. I finally did it. <laughs> And just to be safe, I re-rolled two healthy power mods instead of just one. Well, I should have another healthy power in here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, I re-rolled two healthy power mods just to make sure I'd have myself some healthy power for the future. all mods do it's all i mean if you've got the materials obviously if you have to buy the materials going out looking for them will suck and all that but if you've got the materials like almost every mod is worth just doing yourself right now it seems like unless it's just a real junker mod or that's a mod that's not super popular or whatever like all of the normal go-to mods are just crazy crazy priced I mean, even re-rolling your mod at Chaos 10, it's what, it's like 8 million or 9 million gold? Plus the mats, of course. But even re-rolling at Chaos 10, it's just, the prices are crazy. Alright guys, 15 more seconds, hashtag mask in chat, if you have not already. And uh, I will get you entered in and uh we'll pick us a winner here in most cases for sure glizzy because the prices are just so absurd on things 
It's just a matter of do you have the materials, you know? Because finding the materials is a challenge. Definitely quite the challenge. All right, here we go, y'all. And the theater mask winner is... Gandalf. Rats Gandalf. Uh, say something in chat. Let me know you're still there. Everyone's favorite wizard. Absolutely. Oh, there you go, Gandalf. I just whispered it to you. Uh, just enter that in at the mailbox in game. And uh, you are good to go. Um, anyway, y'all, that is going to get it for me for tonight. Um, I will be online all night uh, after dinner here in Discord. Uh, feel free to swing on by and chat. And then, let's see. We got Harambe streaming. Who all we got streaming DD2 right now? Let's take a peek. Uh, Harambe, myself, Hanzo is streaming. Beardstain is streaming. Um... Let's see, let's just send y'all over to Harambe. I, uh, Harambe's been raiding me a bit lately, so we'll share the love here. Um, but anyway, thanks an absolute ton. Um, hopefully everyone's having a wonderful week. And keep your fingers crossed, hopefully we get a little bit of news about something, uh, tomorrow. Maybe we'll get a Wednesday stream this week. Hoping so. But anyway, thanks a ton, y'all. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you soon.